There's no way, right? Adamo's gone. 10 oh, big lines right. for Michael Adamo. Our two time champ is going to show up. We'll get snap called by Christopher Brewer. And Adamo needs an ace or lots of diamonds. He does get a five. At this point, another five could do it. Nope, it's an ace or a five on the river. Or your pick is already gone. And it's oh, an yes. ace. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I put my hands in the air just because, like, I was like, oh man, don't let me. Uh... Miss pick already. Adamo is doing Adamo things. It looks like we're gonna see some action here, right? The pocket fours against the ace queen. Michael Adamo, what do you have in store for us? He 22. might ship it in. Who knows? Well, I'm not sure what it's gonna. If he does, and his image as well, of course. Oh my goodness, he does ship it in, and I actually think that Ramon is going to call here with the ace queen offsuit. I, I don't really see any. Like you, against other players, maybe you can decide to wait. Maybe you feel there are better spots. Against Michael Adamo, you got to make the call, and he will make the call, and he needs an ace or a queen. Well, fours are ahead right now. Oh, That's my four goodness. A third. You need a three. three. A three and a three only, and that is not a three. So Michael Adamo doubles up again. <laughs> and wow. Nice pick, Nano. Nice pick. 3.7 <laughs> million chips for our two. He just got to run champ. a little hot, right? He just got to run a little hot. So he's got position on all of the chip leaders right now, too. This is a great seat for him. He's in prime position. Um, this is that, that's a dangerous side, right? From Christoph Vogel saying on to Michael Adamo. He ever won with three to four million chips. Well, he is going uh -oh. to three bet, but Rui Ferreira picked up the ace king. He's going to take this one down to a shove. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, not too much more should happen here, I imagine. And Martin Zemai, I feel like Martin Zemai's got the snap cam ready, right? To do something really cool. But uh, oh, look at that! Once again, the emoji game on point, giving us the thank you. One of my favorites as he takes it down. Oh, I love these guys. They are so fun. <laughs> I think he's going to pick up a few more chips, even Ooh. though this could become fireworks. We've got jacks in the big blind. The shortest stack at the table, Ramon, now has ace-jack. You can't really fold ace-jack if you got like, what, five, six big blinds. So he's going for the race, but Davidi is most likely going to go all in as well. Yeah, Davidi is going to reshove here. And Adamo, it's an annoying spot because you never like to see two re-raise all-ins in front of you, but... I mean, well, I'm not, right? It's, it's not that many chips more, but you're getting insane odds and even could be the best hand. And Ace Queen is doing really well against these two type of hands. Yeah. But once again, if I know Michael Adamo, he is going to make the call here. It's just, yeah. it, it's unlike him to fall. Well, I mean, it is scary, but he does make the call and he's going to see, he's like, all right, we actually, this is not all that bad. All we need is an Ace or a Queen. No help yet on the flop. No help on the turn either. This could be a monster pass for Davidi. Yeah, this is really good for Davidi wow. Katai, and we're going to lose our first player. Yep, Ramon is out. I didn't mind the call at all with the ace queen where he lost the majority of his chips. It's just sometimes it's not meant to be. This can get interesting. Christopher Brewer decides to open it up with pocket sevens, but Michael Adamo wakes up with pocket kings. Looks like he is he going to re raise it and call here. Let's see. Is going to re raise. Uh, I think Brewer's going to give him a little action, maybe. I don't know. It's just like these, these, these two guys have been playing actually the high stakes game together, yeah. the $200,000 minimum USC buy in. So it wouldn't be surprised if Brewer gives Adamo a lot of action. You think Limitless is hoping for a one two between <laughs> these two? And he's like, yes, more action. <laughs> yeah, Limitless is on the rail, like, like, just thinking, like, please let Michael Adamo and Christopher Brew win money. And so I, I can maybe <laughs> lose money from them. He's actually the highest earner of the oh! high roller super board. Oh my goodness, what the hell just happened? Christopher Brewer with the race, Michael Adamo shoves. Or the other way around, and Kings are obviously in the Three lead. Times. King on the turn yeah. means that Christopher Brewer is drawing dead. And Michael Adamo is now all the way up to 5 million. No, no, that happened so quick. What the hell just happened there? Yeah, it was a raise and a re-raise from Adamo. And then the shove, just think Chris or Brewer just not look. I know you're up to no good. I play with you all the time in this high stakes game. You're just bluffing off 200, 300K online. And clearly in the 10K tournament, you're going to be bluffing too. But Adamo, he's got the best image to get the action that he wants, right? Like you, you play crazy to get action like this. He's chip leader. He's got 5 million chips. He was the shortest stack. Oh. 
So That's Christopher common. Rua just shoved after Michael Adamo raced. Christopher Rua just shoved immediately, and Adamo with the a split or a snap call is an understatement there. I feel like he called before Christopher Brewer's chips were even in the middle. Bam, couldn't have been any faster. Speaking of aces, what a hand we've got right now. We'll talk more about that hand soon, but let's focus on this one. Nano, the Viriki die with aces. Your man, Michael Adamo with pocket jacks. And Rui Ferreira with ace queen offsuit in the small blind. Yeah, um, this is fireworks. I'm not sure how all the chips are going to get in, but there's going to be a lot of chips going in. Michael Adamo is in <laughs> big trouble. I think he's going to three-bet it. I or think he's he? going to three-bet it. I feel like a jack on the flop, mate. Like, this is Michael Adamo. <laughs> this is his tournament. I feel like if he wins two more, we should just rename it. The High Roller Super Millions featuring Michael Adamo at the final table. Uh, it's the right. re-raise. Now, Rui, ace queen, might yep. go with his hand. I no. I don't fault him to go with his hand, uh, he's but he's going to make yeah. the nice fold. He's good, man. Like I, I, I it's, it's really amazing how good these guys are, but you just know it. The under the gun open of Davidi is scary. Michael Adamo should be aware of that as well. If he three bets, he's got a real hand. I love that Rui just gets rid of the ace queen like that, but I expected him to do so as well because he's just been playing really good poker at these final tables. Now, what does Davidi do? Just cause it's a jack on the flop. Of course there is a jack on the <laughs> flop. No, no, I'm not even surprised. How how can anyone be surprised at this point? This is Michael Adamo's world that we live in. Uh, Here's yeah, the Rui Ferreira folded a screen. Yeah, yeah, there, there you go. And Davidi, I, I just think Davidi's gone. There's just no chance he wins his hand unless it goes heart, heart. Yeah, I was about to say running hearts, maybe. <laughs> Even the queen 10 run out is a bit unlikely because obviously a queen got folded as well. Well, it's not going to be running hearts. And the VD Kitai is still in all sorts of trouble with only 1.4 million chips left, 1.5 in the middle. Michael Adamo. It must feel good to be Michael Adamo. <laughs> he came in in ninth place. He's going to go for more value, I imagine. He's holding two jacks, so he probably thinks his opponent has a hand like king-queen usually or like a flush draw. It makes a lot of sense, sense for him to keep betting. I'd like to see him put out some more chips and just, just take those chips. Just take them. I love it. 33% pot here on the turn. The Vidikitai is going to feel like, oh, this is good. He's not putting me on aces. And we'll most likely get it all in here on the turn. I think he can go for a check jam. He could go for a check called and just check called a river as well. Just to think, it against Adamo, it does make sense to maybe check call a turn and try to get him to bluff off against you because you're going to get it in anyways. Um, but check raising is clearly a fine play just because you're out of position. I think he's going to go all in, and I think Michael Demo will make another call quicker than lightning. The 0.1 second, pop! <laughs> yeah, he thought about it for like 0.3 seconds, and he's going to see that he is in fantastic shape. We only have one ace left in. That could it, be an ace. No. Could, no. Okay, it's not. It's okay, not. it's too dark. <laughs> <laughs> well, that means that Davidi Kitai will go out in eighth place. He will walk away with $51,000. Incredibly unlucky. Rui Ferrer. He's yes. in big trouble, too, mate. Like, I know that his hand is ahead right now, but he is in big trouble, okay, Nano? Because the flop <laughs> is going to come queen, queen, five. And, and Rui Ferreira is going to be in all sorts of trouble. If he this decides. is a disaster. I mean, obviously, it's a coin flip, but, like, no, Rui Ferreira is thinking, there's two guys of so short, <laughs> queen, so little Queen, chips. queen, five. Queen, queen, five. Here we go. <laughs> Ace on the flop. <laughs> Of course, there's an ace on the flop. We need one of the last two remaining jacks, or Rune F will be eliminated. That is not painted. It's another ace. Well, I predicted two queens. It turned out to be two aces. Michael Adamo is running hotter than the sun, and he knocks out another player, and he is now closing in on 10 million chips. No, no, this is ridiculous. This is not even fair, okay? Saquon so is Zamani going to get it all in here, right? I don't yeah. see how Saquon could fold. Well, he is not going to fold, and Martin Zamani is absolutely not going to fold as well. Will we get a snap cam if we get an ace on the flop or anything like that? That's what I'm excited for right now. The flop is no good to Saquon. King on the Ooh. turn obviously doesn't help him, but he does pick up the diamond draw. Can we get a diamond? It is a diamond! Hey, <laughs> 
<laughs> and Martin Zamani giving us the all. I love it, man. He takes it in stride oh, at least. Oh, man. Oh, I'm, that sucks for Zarnit Ren Zamani, but I'm so happy he used it. He, did you see the emoji? He did the yep. just one time oh. real version of it. You should make a Martin Zamani emote page, too. Well, Elky first, okay? I will not rest <laughs> until I can get spam Elky's face everywhere. But a shorter stack in the table is going to go all in with ace, queen, suited. And he may actually. Can he get a call of Michael Demo? Michael Demo is like, ah, oh, what about a deuce four five flop? You know, that's pretty good. <laughs> I think he could give him a call here. I think he can yeah. fold as well. Uh, fold is okay in the sense that you can put all the pressure on, you leave the short stack in there, but calling obviously is fine. All right. All right, I'm ready for it. <laughs> no! Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> you are kidding look me, at, man. Look, no, no, no. The is emoji too at the same time. The Snapchat is like, <laughs> this is ridiculous. Well, it's not deuce four or five, but uh, trip trees on the flop. There is going to be the end of Bruno. He finishes in a sixth place, walks away with $81,000, I believe. Oh, I'll double no. check that. Look this, at this is ridiculous, Nano. This and is absolutely ridiculous. I'm two done. Two queens. It's two queens for Adamo. There's Ace Jack for Christoph. I was saying Christopher Brew has got two nines. This I don't even see this. <laughs> when, I say, when I said this is ridiculous, I didn't even see the next setup yet. Here we go. Oh my God. I could win a tournament like this. I probably. <laughs> 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 this is insane. What a run. Uh, this is this is this is so crazy. There's the three bet. Adamo's gonna go for the four bet. Can Christopher Brewer get away from the nines this time? We know he's, he shoved the sevens into those kings that started this chain reaction. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. This is. I this actually is think they'll both get away. I think <laughs> they'll be you like think, you know what? You think, but you don't know, right? You don't know. Now, if Mike Adamo uh, goes all in here which I believe there is a good chance he will, then I think they'll both get out of the way. Oh, yeah. So okay. he's going to put 1.3 million. I think this play is good. Adamo's got the image. The thing is, Adamo does four bet bluff in this spot, right? It's not like he's only playing aces, kings. He really does. Like, I'm telling you, this guy is capable of making plays. So uh, to nines, it's, it's not... Let, let it go, Christoph. Let it go, let right? It go. Let it go. Let it go, mate. Even even if you're good, you're not actually good. Well, he is going to make the call, and that means we've got three million chips in the middle at this point. Ace on the flop could slow things down a little bit. I'm curious to see how Michael Adamo decides to play this out of position. Yeah, this is a very tricky spot. He might throw out the 750k 25% pot bet, um, which a lot of players do. He might go for the check. I it just depends. These guys should go for the third pot, uh, the tenth pot bet. Yeah, I was about. To, that's not a third. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this this almost makes it seem like he's got aces or something. You know, the right. four bet free flop, the tiniest bet ever on the flop. What will Christopher Brew do? What a hand this is! This would be amazing. Like he makes oh, he the calls. Wow, Christopher Brew is just thinking, man, Adamo wants those buy-ins back for that high roller. He just thinks he's up to no good. And Adamo is actually in a tricky spot because it does kind of look like Christopher Brewer has got a hand like Ace Queen, right? Or Ace Jack suited, or maybe an Ace 10 suited. So like yeah, the ace is very scary right now for him. What will Michael Adamo do? I do say that uh... I mean, obviously, this got to be scary for him as well. It's got to be uncomfortable because Christopher Brewer could have easily could easily have ace king suited, ace queen suited, right? With the way that he played this, with his three bet pre flop, then still making the call after getting four betted. So this is a very tricky spot for Michael Adamo. The queens are still good, but he probably doesn't feel like his queens are good. Yeah, he's thinking: should he go for another small bet? He is going to go for the tiny bet. This is a, well, I don't know, 500, oh, what's through. the math on that? That's a nice bet. Um, it's an it's interesting spot. I think his, his thought process there is, look, I don't want to let someone maybe take it away from me. I might still have the best hand. If I get called here one more time, probably just give up the river card. Actually, this could get interesting. Ace three is going to shove from the small blind. This is Ooh. a tough spot. Crystal Vogel saying, once upon a time, I chip leader. What is he going to do with the king jack mm. suited here in the big blind? He's got an ice cube next to his name. Never a good sign. Yeah, uh, Adamo would call here. I'll tell you that. I'm not sure what Kristoff's going to do. King jack suited he makes the is call. usually the best hand, and he is going to make the call. He's not far behind. 
Nope, and he flops a king, which means that Saquon right now needs an ace, and well, with a jack on the turn, it is all over already. Saquon is once again eliminated, kind of in the center. Fifth place will walk away with $122,000, but that's obviously kind of unfortunate. Played solid, Nano, just I uh, couldn't really get much done. All three of these guys have actually fought back against Michael Adamo. Crystal Brewer, you know, obviously been fighting the most against Michael, They're losing a lot of chips again, but he just raised that five deuce suit in the small blind against Adamo's big blind, which is very dangerous. We saw Christoph Vogel saying three bet like the queen six offsuit, right? Martin Zamani three bet him with king queen offsuit. Like these guys are not as scared of his opponent. Of course, Adamo's in the best position, but uh, these. They're, they're fighting back against him. They're not like the other final tables. I think they gave Michael Adamo more wiggle room to kind of just easily run over the table. But these guys are are putting up a fight. Queen Eight is going to be more than pleased with this flop. Christopher will lead out here. Or at least we'll bet first with his two pair. And Martin Zamani makes the call with his nine seven. He had bottom pair. Improves a little on the turn. He now has a pair on an open ender. I'm thinking yeah. seven eight hundred K. But regardless, uh, oh. he is going to go for a really big bet. You just got to protect your hand. Plus, if you had a big draw, you probably would bet really big too, just to try to force some folds. Well, big it is. And it's actually kind of a tough spot for Martin Zamani because obviously he would have loved to just see a river card and see a 10 or a 5 roll off there. That's not the case. He oh, makes the, oh my goodness, and the snap call from Christopher Brewer needs to avoid the 10, 5, or 7 on the river. And if he does, he picks up a monster pot, and he will avoid all those cards. Uh, Martin Zamani is not out, but he is left crippled with less than 8 big blinds. Yeah, he's 16 big blinds. It just sucks that you got 16, 17 big blinds here. But the thing is, small blind, big blind versus small blind. I don't, I don't love it. It's but true. I feel like I'm good. <laughs> I love it. He, makes it <laughs> he will see that he's ahead, but he needs to avoid kings and eights. The flop is safe for Martin. No, oh, no, 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 no. Ace. ace. Ace and an ace only. That is not an ace. And that means that Martin Zamani will be eliminated in fourth place. He will walk away with $163,000. We absolutely love having Martin at the final table. This was the second time we saw him. Fantastic character. I love the fact that he brought out the snap cams. And I truly hope that we can welcome him back next week or the week after that. Ace Queen. Christopher Brewer might just call here. Would be the wrong moment to race. Well, we know that Dom was going to do raids, whether it's against a limp or a raise, he would be re-raising. He is going to see a limp. I mean, it doesn't really matter if he has ace queen or not, right? Most likely would still race anyway. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. That ace could have been a three of hearts, and he'd probably still do the exact same thing. <laughs> <laughs> He's not going to make it cheap. And let's just hope that Christopher Brewer doesn't just suddenly snap and is like, all in. It's like, no, this is not the moment, mate. Don't do it. Uh, I don't think he's going to do that. He's just thinking about limp calling, which he does. Oh. Outflops his opponent, and uh, Damo's got two over cards. Yep. So obviously he picks up the gut shot as well. Every ace, every queen, every king is good for Michael Adamo. But at least Christopher Brewer is in the lead for now. Gonna just fire out some chips. Try to take it down. You got a good hand to consider multi-barreling with. Brewer, to top raise here. Yeah, I'd love to see him raise here. Especially against Michael Adamo, the way that he's been playing. If he does have a real hand, he'd love to see him raise. But even if he does think he's good... Um, he is going to raise. I would say he could also call down his opponent, which isn't a, a bad option as well. Uh, so he is going to go for a check raise. Adamo is not he going to fold. Go He's not going to fold. No. I feel like he might even just ship it. Yeah, he might. <gasps> no, nope. uh, he's going to call. He is going to call. The five of clubs is no good, which means that Brewer is still in the lead. I mean, there's almost more in the middle at this point than he's got left in his stack. I'd love to see him bet big here, if not just go all in. Yeah, and when you go for the check raise at this point, you got to commit the chips at some point. It okay. just is going to shove. It just seems like you, you can't check raise this to start playing passive now in this turn card. You just got to take down what's in the middle. Adamo yeah. is not going away yet. He might consider call. He's just trying to think how often he's up against a draw and how often he's up against like uh, a jack. He might. He probably doesn't expect Christopher Brewer to check raise a hand as weak as jack seven. So he might be discounting some top pairs a decent amount. 
I love the way that Christopher played his hand, though. I mean, we've got Hawkeye up, so we can see everything, but I absolutely love the way that he's been playing this. And he's really putting Michael Adamo to the test. And if you take it down here, I mean, that's pretty damn sweet, right? Because that's a massive pot, and you avoid a potential very scary river card. If you get called, well, you got it in good. That's pretty much the best you can do in poker. And then you just yeah. hope that you stay good. So Adamo's trying to think how often he's up against a draw right now in a jack. Um, is he, and he occasionally? Oh he my god, make he makes the call. The call. All right, what's it going to be, an ace king or a queen? <laughs> I don't know if he's going to get there this time. No, yeah. he doesn't get there. Wow, that is very exciting for all of us. And that is great news for Christopher Brewer, who's been playing some really solid poker. This could get interesting as well. We've got pocket sixes on the bottom. Vogel saying has the deuces in the big blind. Will most likely just make the call. No, he's gonna go all in. Oh my goodness. Vogel saying ships all in with the deuces. And what will Christopher Brewer do here with the sixes? If he calls, he is in an amazing spot to get himself in a heads up match with Michael Adamo. And he makes the oh, call. He does Mano. make the call. Bogle saying he's in so much trouble. He needs a deuce or a miracle. Well, just a deuce. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It could, it. Chop. It could chop. I don't think no. it can now, no, it can't. right? It can't. No, it can't. That was not a paint picture, so it had to be yeah. paint. No? I mean, we can we don't have two uh, nine of clubs in the deck now. No? <laughs> Let that be. That'd be very unfortunate. So we're heads up now, right? Oh, yep. GG to Christoph. He he came to the final table as chip leader, got 220k for his payout, but it just seems like these two were meant to battle it out, right? They've been battling each other out in the 500, 1000, 2000 game. They've been playing pots after pots throughout this final table. It's your man, Christopher Brewer, the guy mm -hmm. I picked, Michael Adamos. So this is just the dream scenario right now. <laughs> oh, action flop? Yes, yeah, semi-action flop. At a, okay, turn action cards. Flop? Snapchat, yeah. <laughs> action turn? Action turn. <laughs> Let's see how what Michael Adamo decides to do with his flush. He's going to bet out 245,000 chips. Of course, Christopher Rue does have the king oh. of spades, and we get another spade on the river. So Christopher Brewer makes the higher flush. Yeah, I think Adamo's like, hmm. Can I get value from worse? Is going to bet a small bet. And can Brewer maybe potentially get more value by raising? It's, it's a tricky spot because it's, it's always scary 1. to raise. Ah, he does 1. raise. Nice. Yeah. Knows he's got ah. the best hand. Yep. I love it. I, I absolutely love the play here. If you're Michael Damon, you're like, hmm, I've got two spades in my hand. It's always possible. The thing is, a nine of spades isn't even that bad, right? Like, <laughs> Every now and then, they'll, they'll make plays with a worse spade than that. It's not the yeah. dream flush, but it's somewhat decent. I mean, their time, the high makes are really running low now. He, he's got a tough spot, and he's got to act quickly. Oh, no! Oh, no, all in. no oh, what? 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 Adamo's the best. What just Honey? happened? He just reached up, tried to represent a full house, and got his opponent to fold the bigger flush. He turned his hand into, he went for the value bet and turned it, I don't what? know, it's, it's an insane hand. Mate, what just happened? I thought that was it. I was like, that's it, that's it, it's over. Christopher Brewer takes down the tournament. But then he didn't. And he snapped for, I mean, he obviously has like very little time left in his time bank, but he had 13 seconds. I mean, could have been worried about the full house, of course. Could have been the ace high flush that he was worried about as well. But wow, I did not, I did not expect <laughs> him to fall there. You, you you can't ever you got to be scared thinly value raising against Michael wow. Adamo because he can always just put you put you all in again. I, can't <laughs> I don't know, believe man. that. I can't believe it. Yeah, they, they, they well, still heads up. They still got a lot of chips to play for. Like I said, these chips can fly in no matter what. Doesn't matter how many big lines they got. Wow, and he snap folded it as well. It's crazy. That is crazy, Michael Adamo. 9.2 million chips at this point. Doesn't really have Your a whole heart's lot of... racing, isn't it? It's just yeah, like, no, man, I, the hands are I, too crazy. Mentally, I was ready to declare Christopher Brewer the winner. I was like, that's it. 
like it's over. Mike Ardama will not be the three-time champ. We know he's won it twice already. <laughs> just, but you gotta watch these hands. He just overbet the jack. Hey, how, how how does Adama win with the worst hand with no flop, no nothing? He just somehow finds ways to win. Because betting is good. The betting. <laughs> oh, well, ace seven against ace four here. So if nothing crazy happens, they could chop it. But we know that with Mike Ardama, there is no guarantee for anything. He's gonna fire half a million chips into the middle. And they both make Broadway. That's kind of funny. Yeah, and uh, that's a nice call from Christopher Brewer there. Just ace high. Yeah. Was, knew his hand was reasonable. And now they're both like, okay, how do we get some value here? Actually wasting his shot clock here. <laughs> valuable, <laughs> valuable seconds because nothing is going to happen in this hand. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like, if you got a no-brainer hand, just play quickly. Look, Christopher Brewer used one second there. Oh, yeah. Well, Michael Demo might just go for the call here. Maybe just ship it in. Maybe hoping that his opponent has like a pair on a flush draw, but that ain't happening. They've yeah, got the uh, same hand and they're probably aware of it as well. Ooh, this could... <laughs> Let's and, uh, represent another full house, Nano. <laughs> they're, they're not folding. There's no way because no one would ever... I mean, Adamo's probably going to shove because he doesn't expect two pair to ever raise the turn, but there's no way Christopher Brewer is ever folding this hand. No, nope. okay. this time he does make the snap call. And they'll both receive the kneels as we are going to chop this one up. Is Christopher Brewer going to limp call to 10-3 suited? I mean, he might. It's a playable hand. It's not a great hand, but it's, you know, he got position. He got the suited hand, so he does make the call. And this is a really bad flop for both players. <laughs> yes. Christopher Brewer. That's a very interesting turn, right? It's very bad for Adama also because he's not expected to hit a straight here. I think Brewer should fire. It just seems like he could get easily get a hand to fold. But Adamo is can he make the call of Ace King? I would be so That'd nasty, be but so correct. It is oh correct my. and he calls. Yeah, but now you gotta pull the trigger if you're Christopher Brewer. If Adamo checks here again, I know it's tough. He could obviously have it too, but he is the one who three bad pre flop. How likely is it? Can he do it? One time, Christopher Brewer. He, he does. does. 3.3 million. Adamo. You, oh, my no. God. If he calls this one. Don't this you dare to call here, Michael Adamo. Don't you dare to call. Let us be outrageous. Oh, oh my, my God. 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 Michael Adamo is the best. <laughs> Look at that. How? That just, Look how do you call on that board? But I'm happy we're seeing it. This is such amazing poker right now. And they're fighting back. Christopher Brewer is not out. He's shipping up slowly. He's got the queen jack in the sand. It really is anyone's game. And it's not anyone's game anymore. Oh it's all goodness. Michael Adamo. And I don't see how Chris Brewer gets away. Unless he can hit a jack, he can maybe... <laughs> it's I don't Michael see. Adamo's world. And we're all just and enjoying some poker inside of it. As Christopher Brewer is going to go for the raise on this flop. But a demo with trip sixes is not going to go anywhere. Oh, it no. gets worse. No, Christopher Brewer. He doesn't deserve this. He has played insane. He makes a demo. He or can be our three-time champion soon. Here's another bet. As long as a queen or jack does not roll off, this is over, guaranteed. Yep. That'd be so insane. Imagine if it does, actually. It's oh. clock sixes. It's he wins in style. Of course, of course, Michael Adamo is going to win this tournament in style. Christopher Brewer's got a full house. And it's not going to be enough. This is it, guys. The epic heads-up match is over. Christopher Brewer will finish in second place. Walk away with $293,000. But Michael Adamo is writing poker history here, if you ask me. Winning three out of the first ten editions of the High Rollers Super Millions. Walking away with $392,000. I don't think he ever had to fight harder for it than he did today. But Nano Noko, how insane is this? Um,
Hello everyone and welcome to the GG Poker official channel here on Twitch. I am Kevin McCoy, also known as Rotterdam, and I've been flying around trying to get everything ready in time, but everything worked out. I'm here and I'm ready to watch awesome poker once again. And of course, as always, I am joined by the one and only Nana Noko, because otherwise I'd just be lost. I mean, I just have no idea what's happening. What's up, Nana? Hey, what's up, man? How you doing? It's been great. Uh, it's GG Poker's been on fire lately, like a lot of action going on. We've been mentioning over and over again a bunch of nosebleeds, uh, and they just haven't been stopping, right? There's like more more people playing it. At one point, I saw four tables of it going on at once, uh, 500, 1,000, 2,000. And of course, uh, the tournaments haven't been stopping too. There's 25K that happened the other day. Uh, where they're down to the final table now, and I was trailing that a bit, and Michael Adamo actually bubbled the tournament. Like, it's funny, because, oh. like, he had, like, a, a good stack, and he just reshoved the H-Jacks. He's like, I'm always just going for the win, even though we're not even close to the final table yet. So he bubbled that tournament, but uh, Jason Kuhn's the chip leader, and um, you know who's doing well in that tournament, too? Saquon. They remember Saquon, who's yeah, always been doing really good in our tournaments. Uh, and we don't really, we didn't know much about him, but man, that guy's uh, doing really good in that one too. So it's, it's been a really cool uh, railing the GG poker action lately. Of course, as you guys know, Tuesday evening is the evening of the High Roller Super Millions over here at GG Poker. This tournament always takes place on Sunday and they play all the way down to the final nine. And then here we go live at 8 p.m. Central European Summertime. We do a little pre-show. We go over the nine players that made it to the final table and we cover some of the memorable hands they had on their journey to that final table as well. But I like that you're talking about everything else that's been going on as well, Nano. Uh, speaking of Ace Jack, I was actually watching uh, Danny on the ground stream yesterday, where I think he was on his second bullet for the main. And then at one point, um, I think he had like 31 bigs or something. And he's like, okay, sixes. He's like, well, he's limping against the big blind. Big blind. He's like, well, if he's going to make it 3.5, 3.7, I'm just going to go all in. 3.7. Then he was like, all right, this is it, all in. Guys, snap calls with Ace Jack. And then he was like, of course, I mean, he doesn't even think for a second that he could be beat here, right? Because <laughs> the flop was like ace jack something and another ace came on the river. Uh, but yeah, it's been, the action has been insane. And it's been really fun as a poker fan to just watch so many different streamers. Uh, I've really been enjoying Easter Dams actually over the last few weeks. I'm kind of quiet when I'm watching his stream, but uh, I really like the way he's been doing it. And he's playing a lot of the big tournaments as well. He's been dipping his toes in some of the cash game action as well over at GG. The VIP tables, but the lower end of the VIP tables, you know. Uh, it's just been amazing, man. It's been such a crazy week of poker over at GG Poker, and uh, I can't wait for more. Yeah, I definitely agree with you. And uh, it's like, I've never been such a railbird ever, but like, you know, it's just, it's just, I just, you just a specific tab, right, in the lobby. It says VIP games, and you're, you just look at it, and then you're just always looking for the highest stakes, and like, oh, it's almost running like uh, I would say half the time I look in the lobby, I see that game running, but it's been really cool. And uh, of course, we're here at the 10K Super Millions. It's also been a really cool treat. What episode are we on? Do you know? Is it like yep. the 10th or 11th? This is the 11th, 11th, because Michael Adama won three out of the first 10, which is insane. That's obviously not some something that somebody is going to top tonight. But there is a man and he's our chip leader heading into tonight we do need to talk about because he has also accomplished something that nobody has accomplished before here at the high roller super millions 10k buy-in 2 million guaranteed and you know what nano last few weeks we were like hey guys it's really cool we had 210 entries 212 entries or whatever it was 267 entries this sunday so by far and away the most signups we've had so far absolutely smashed the previous record which was at like 217 or something so it's really cool to see that a lot of the high rollers are feeling this tournament and they want to make it to these final tables and speaking of the final table let's just go ahead and start our pre-show the official pre-show let's take a look at the nine players that made it tonight and first and foremost our chip leader again nano back to back to back final tables that's pretty fucking insane yeah, it's pretty insane. It's the very first person to do the three-time final tables, which is and we're just setting records all the time in the Super Millions in such a short <laughs> amount of time, right? Like, it's the 11th edition. Uh, you know, I told you about Ruin F before. I said, this guy is really solid, right? He plays all the tournaments, all the different mixed games, and just consistently mm -hmm. gets far. Uh, it kind of reminds me of, like, the European, where they just keep getting to the end of the tournament somehow. 
Ruin F has got seventh place and fourth place so far. He hasn't gotten the top three finish, but this time he's going to come into the final table with the chip leader. He's going to do some damage. This guy, we saw he's capable of making some really cool plays, uh, really light call downs, you know, and just you just never know whenever these guys got it because they're super solid. But man, they, they, they're creative and they're really good. Yeah, what I like from this guy as well, and that I've noticed in a couple of previous weeks, if somebody has it out for his big blind, oh, he's defending. Like, don't you think that you're just going to raise a couple rounds in a row? Because he will make a stance and he will defend it. That is something that really stuck out for me. Well, let's take a look at one of the hands he had this week that brought him to the final table. And it's a, it's a funny one with a rather feisty river. I've been taking a little look at it. But then I'll talk us through what do you see? Is it something that really stands out that you think it's typical of Runa? Well, I would say in a blind versus blind battle, you know, the flop seems pretty standard, but it's a turn that's actually quite interesting because, you know, he bets his little pair and then he checks the turn because, you know, you got to be a little bit scared, right? But his opponent bets and he still calls with what? Third pair at this point. And it's a tough call to make at this point because, you know, the blinds are big. His opponent who doesn't have like the biggest stack is probably not going to make some crazy plays out of him but you know he decides to still call here with the pair and you know he rivers the trip sevens and you know he calls a big bet on the river just in case he's behind uh but it just show, goes to show like you you can't bluff this guy like um yeah he's not always he's not the station he's not calling you on every single hand but you know <laughs> he, he's definitely going to to stick around sometimes and you know we've seen some calls he made down in the previous one that were correct and incorrect but you know it, it's just going to be whenever you play against a, a good player who is hard to get him to fold some hands some spots it, it's really tough because if you don't make hands uh it's really hard to win against them what I, uh, what I did wonder about though is why did he just call the river here? I feel like that was the best possible card he could have gotten. I know you already talked some about it in case he's beat, but don't you mm -hmm. think that this is a moment where you might just want to take it all? Yeah, I think there's a reasonable chance that he could have just shoved it all in. You know, maybe he, in hindsight, he probably thought the same thing like, oh man, I probably should have just shoved that all in. But the main thing I think he was thinking as well, I'm either against a bluff or a made hand. Um, and a made hand he thinks usually would that could would call a shove. He probably didn't expect a jack to ever bet call, so he probably thinks, look, you got a king or like a boat, or usually you just got like a 10 9, a diamonds, and thing like that. Then again, you know, I'm not saying he shouldn't have shoved. Uh, he might have thought he should have shoved because of how small his opponent's short uh, stack was on the river. He probably should have, but you know. Um, you know, so you're a poker player, right? You play, you, you make some mistakes here and there, but I don't, I don't know if this is a huge mistake. No, of course not. I definitely, I was just wondering, just curious, Nana. I mean, a guy who makes back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back final tables, I don't think I'm ever going to be like, hey, big mistake, brother. He's going to be like, excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> so it's really cool to see Rune F again at the final table. An amazing uh, achievement by him already. And he comes in as the chip leader tonight. Obviously, he has a lot of big lines to work with. Super cool. Let's take a look at our second player that made it to this final table. And this is a name that uh, we have not seen before because there is a story behind this one, Randy. He satellited into this one by first playing a $100 satellite, winning it, qualifying for the $1,000 satellite, winning that one. And now he's here at the final table in the 10K High Roller Super Millions, coming in with the second most big blinds, 49.9. What a story this could become. Yeah, I mean, I don't know much about this guy, but you can see he plays mid-stakes normally. If you look at his GG poker results, we had to bring up $200 tournaments uh, because his tournament, uh, <laughs> he doesn't play the big buy-ins that much. He always tries to satellite in, right? So he, uh, most people who try to satellite into the tournament, they just get the one right before, the 1K into the 10K, right? But this guy went from the $100 to the 1K to the 10K. And you can see he also apparently satellited into the 25K PPC um, as well and you know he did the same thing he started small and eventually got to the 25k seat so like uh, and you know he's one of his results show he's he, he's played wsopc 25k too he probably satellite today i wouldn't be surprised he satellites into the 210 special that he got first place and who knows but like uh, <laughs> I, i'm sure he's it seems like he plays very regularly likes to play satellites is he a good player probably pretty good but you know he's a different kind of good player right because he's a mid-stakes player he probably doesn't play against these sickles all the time so i hope we're gonna have to see if we can make the correct adjustments against these guys yeah that's going to be really fun because they're definitely going to put him to the test because we have a couple of very big names at this final table as well
Let's take a look at one of the hands that Mr. Bluff Me Not had on his journey to the final table. And Nano, even though his name is Bluff Me Not, I don't know about you, but uh, it feels that he is uh, definitely the bluffing type. I mean, whenever you see a hand like this, I know that you love these kind of river bats. So this this got to get you a little excited for tonight. I tell you, he's already adjusted perfectly based on this hand history. You can see here, he's not scared. So he bets the flop with his straight draw. Uh, double gutter, right? And he gets check raise. And, you know, he doesn't get away, even though it's a big check raise, right? And the turn goes check, check, river, checks to him again. And, you know, when you just got jack seven high on your opponent, yeah, they check raise you on the flop, but they probably would have bet that turn or that river if they had a good hand. So it's a really nice bet from him. The ace is a good card. It's scary in case his opponent went for a thin check raise with, like, I don't know, like an eight, eight, seven, ten, nine type hand. It, it's scary. Uh, it just goes, if this guy's satellite in and he's still making these big bets, and bluffs uh, it makes sense why he's at the top of the chip counts and not coming in in like ninth or eighth place and i think what's also worth mentioning is if you look at the chip counts here this is very deep into the tournament so at this point they're actually getting close to the final table man if i would satellite into a bigger satellite into the main event and then i would have such a run there is no way that i would have the courage to make a bet that big that close to the final table at that point i'd be like nope Lock it up. <laughs> Aces, kings, and that's it. No, no, I want to get that final table. So this definitely shows us that he uh, he came here to play and that hopefully we can see some cool moves out of him tonight. Let's take a look at our next player. And this is a familiar face to the final tables of the High Rollers Super Millions. Darren Elias. Nananoko, he's back. A poker professional from Boston. Uh, he won one of, one of the very early one of our series, right? He won the one where F.U. Tim Riley was bluffing off seven dudes off suit into third <laughs> place or whatever. So he won 393,000. He could be our second two-time champion in the 10K Super Millions today, and he's in good position to do so. Yep. Right, he's coming in third place. He's got a lot of wins. Uh, you can see here with the trophy at that WPT. Uh, this guy just ships Torm. He's super solid. Look, the tournament he won, I didn't remember too much of his play because it was so solid, and it was a little bit overshadowed from F.U. Tim Riley's craziness, but... He was probably the best player at that final table. He's very strong. He's going to do really well today. I just know, I think there's a good chance he could even ship this one. Well, we can take a look at one of his hands that brought him to the final table. But Nano, I think I can analyze this one, okay? Hear me out. Like, he raises <laughs> with the kings. Well, and then somebody just shoves it all in, and you're like, well, I hope he doesn't have aces, but I'm going to call anyway because it's a cold day in hell before I'm going to fold king's preflop. Damn it, he's got aces. Jackpot. <laughs> ah, yeah, king on the flop. Wrap it up. Hey, what do you think? Pretty good, right? <laughs> uh, you pretty much nailed it. Uh, except he should have folded the king's preflop. He knew his opponent had the aces, or he should have... I just want to know, did he emoji at the right time? <laughs> just one time <laughs> or at the moment you call off like obviously this is a, a pretty you know decent sized shop right it's 21 big blinds and you're like well it's not gonna be my last hand but i think at that point i would use the my last hand emoji i've been loving that one mate even if it's not my last hand at all i've been having so much fun with it well we look forward to seeing uh, darren elias play of course not too much we can really say about this hand other than that lady luck was on his side we can take a look at the next player that's made it to this final table a name that we haven't seen before uber celta also satellited into this event a very similar story to bluff me not hundred dollar satellite into a thousand dollar satellite into the main event the ten thousand dollar buy-in that is uh, required to participate in the high roller super millions I mean, selling 90% of the action, by the way. <laughs> uh, okay, well, I mean, he can still win a lot. Come on. Uh, he Here's a correction, though. He wanted to sell 90%. He sold 0% oh. at a 1.0 markup. Basically, this guy had a light into tournament and wow. trying to just free... You know, he's like, wait, no, this is a lot of money. It's $10,000. Let me get some of that money back. I'll just play for 10%. No big deal. And no one wanted it. If you look at his stats, right, we had to bring up results from his $55 daily special win. This guy. Hey, that is a fun tournament, Nano. A... Don't you touch the daily <laughs> special, okay? I played that one too. But, I mean, he, he's a he's a low-stakes player, you know? Like, he's playing the, the 105 yuan tournament. That That's really small. That's like 20 bucks or something or, or less. He, he's... Um, 
I hope this guy does well because I know the money is going to mean a lot to this guy. That means he probably should be playing tight. I don't know what his hand history is yet, but uh, if I was thinking with other players, I'd be gunning for this guy's big blind a bit more because he, he might be trying to just ladder up as much as possible. Well, uh, I love the story already. I love the fact that he tried to sell up to 90%. He's like, that would mean I make $9,000. Nobody wanted it. Well, Uber Celta, no worries, mate. You've guaranteed yourself, I believe it's $46,000 already, the main cash. So I'm already loving the story. Let's take a look at his hand. And this was a uh, pretty feisty hand, which also includes Jason Kuhn, who I saw, but oh my God, if you talk about sick beats, my friend was playing uh, the main event. We'll talk about his hand real soon. Uh, one of my friends won the StarCraft Challenge, so he was playing the 5K main event this week, and he had Ape Styles on his table and Jason Kuhn. So it was really cool. And at one point, he's, my friend's like, what the hell? What happened? Jason Kuhn is gone. And Jason Kuhn had a pretty big stack. Not flush against a straight flush on the turn or something. <laughs> and it all went in. I was like, wow. If that's what it takes to uh, beat Jason Kuhn, I understand why he's playing so damn well. Uh, and he, obviously his results are so impressive. Anyway, take a look at this hand. Pretty wild, Nano. Pretty wild pre-flop action. Yeah, it looks like there was a... He, he squeeze-shoved the Queen Jack suited. So, you know, he... You know, I thought maybe this guy might be a little bit scared money, right? But, you know, skill showing here. It's actually a really good play to reshove the Queen Jack suited into normally a raise in a call because they're going to just try to steal your blind so much, right? But he's still putting in defense. Of course, he ran into... Pocket Kings and uh, but the puck he rivered the two pair, you know, he flopped really well to crack Jason Kuhn. Who Jason Kuhn, uh, he didn't make the final table because of this Queen Jack suited, right? Took some of his chips and just probably put him on monkey tilt. Who knows? And you know, one of the guys holding pocket sevens who who would have actually cracked the uh, you know, beat the Queen Jack suited here, but that's what happens. You reshove, sometimes you're wrong, but you still got a chance to win. And as long as you're fighting for chips, and people can't just steal your blinds over and over again. Yeah, well, and this uh, this hand obviously happened a lot earlier in the tournament, like 1.3 million. It's quite a bit, but he's got way more to work with right now. So a really cool story. And uh, it's always hard not to cheer at least a little for the underdogs. Bluff me not. And Uber Celta, both basically getting into this event from $100 and now already guaranteed $46,000. I love those kinds of poker stories. Let's take a look at our next player. And I know that this is someone that you've got quite... Uh, a bit to talk about. First of all, shout out to using Herb Dean, okay? Using Herb Dean as your avatar. One of my favorite referees in MMA. But this man, I'm not even going to try to pronounce the nickname. You can go with the last part, Dakani. But he's also known as uh, Lars Luzak. Yeah, yeah, this is uh, Lars Luzak. I don't know how to uh, spell that name, but as you can see, he, there he is right there. Lars Luzak, oh man, he's been around for so, so long. He was the guy who played, he used to play primarily heads up but you know when guys like Tom Dewan were playing heads up like that's way back when he was one of the guys battling out too um, more on those euro sites a bit uh, but you know he's now he's ventured into GG poker uh, you know he's played all the super millions this third he's just really good at heads up he's really good at tournaments he, he's he's definitely the guy who's played the highest stakes of all the guys uh, at this final table hands down and by far Right, and he plays big cash games. The other day, I was checking out the PLO VIP games I was running. I think it was 200, 400, 800 or something like that. And he was playing those games, so he's very, really well versed. And you can see, you look at his results. He plays pretty much every single four, every single 5K, right? Like, he's, we just put all his Blade Prime tournament results up there. Uh, but, he's, you know, he had like two, two million GG poker wins. He's been playing there for a while, and he's just really good. He's got a very fun hand as well that helped him get to this final table. Uh, I don't know if you would be like, yeah, that's an easy call on the turn, but I'd be so nervous making a call like this. So let's go ahead and take a look at one of the hands that helped Lars Luzak get to this final table. We've got 9-10 battling it out with Ace-Queen and a lot of pressure being put on him at the turn. Talk to me about that turn decision. That's a big, big call because it's not like a pot size bet. Now, this is an over bet shove, calls with the pair in a straight draw, and it's a really tough one to make, right? Lars lose that. He plays the highest stakes, so he knows how to make thin calls. He knows hand reading ability. He was like, Look, if you had like a straight, you had two pair, are you really just going to over bet shove the turn? You're probably on one of those straight draws like King, Queen, Ace, Queen, or like some diamond draws. And if I'm against that, 
yeah, I'm, I'm ahead, so I'm going to make the calls on them ahead. And, you know, it's a gutsy call. We don't see them too often in these spots, but, you know, you, you can't bluff the high-stakes players. They're just, they just, they can sniff out these bluffs all the time. And it feels so damn good when you're right. Let's go ahead and move on. In 10 minutes, our final table will start the 11th edition of the High Roller Super Millions. Let's go ahead and talk about this man. You've already kind of shared his life story. I loved it. I've been on board ever since. Jonathan Van Vliet, also known as Abe Styles. He too was at that table last week when I saw Jason Kuhn get busted by a straight flush in the main <laughs> event. And he was obviously like being pretty damn aggressive, but busted a little bit later as well. I mean, what else can we talk about Ape Cells? He seems to be playing non-stop, by the way, over at GG. Yeah, I mean, like I, I told you too, I've said, you know, this guy, you know, he had some downswing, uh, you know, maybe some life issues he was trying to get through. And, you know, he came back and said, I'm going to be a better player. I'm just going to be the best. And you can see here, he's, you know, he's studying here in the background, doing some interviews. Uh, and he's playing like all the tournaments around everywhere. He's been around for a really long time. He's made his comeback and he's playing like the biggest games. He's playing 25Ks. I've seen him play 100Ks. Uh, he, he's just like, he's really good. He hasn't done well in the Super Millions yet. Yes, it's his sixth cash, so he's probably not down money. And he's got three final tables, but he's got a seventh place and a fifth place. I know he's came to some of these final tables as a bigger chip count, but hasn't done that well. Maybe this is his time. I really like the guy. I've met him before. He's really strong, really nice guy, and uh, I think he can really do well, but hopefully this is finally his, his one time to do well. <laughs> well, let's see if he can get that miracle run. The hand is actually kind of cool. Let's take a look at one of the hands that Ape Styles had. Because he was battling it out with the three-time champ, Michael Adamo. And this is just a disgusting flop uh, bet, if you ask me. Like, does it really have to be that big, Nana? <laughs> It's a huge check raise, right? The big one's only 25,000. He check raises 670,000. He's just like, look, I know Michael. Well, it looks like Michael Damo was pretty short in his hand, yeah. but just think he just knows Michael Damo is just always up to no good. And when someone mint, like raises pretty small dish stack size, they look like they got a pretty big hand, right? Aces, kings, or queens. But it's like, this is Michael Damo. This guy's probably got like the 10 9, maybe the 9 7 suited or something stupid, right? And you know, he goes for the big all in, and we've seen. Uh, Ape Styles play and he's not afraid. He's he's willing to make check raise bluffs on these final tables and things like this. So he can make good hero calls. So, you know, sometimes when you get check raise and flops and turns, you're like, ah, oh, this guy's got to have it. They just never bluff here. But against Ape Styles, you always got to be worried that he is bluffing and you can't make big folds against him because if you do, you might be just burning money really bad because he's capable of these plays. Isn't uh, Michael Adamo first to act here on the flop though? So it's just. Uh... Well, Not Michael Donald raising. did throw out. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. raise all in. Yeah, yeah, okay. Just, yeah. Just, you know, to, Yo, to be clear. Michael Donald right? just, he, he just let out one big blind or something. Yeah. <laughs> I, Bump. Yeah, you know, you never know what's going through that head, but you just know yeah. he's always capable of bluffing. So if you've got some equity, you can always put a play on him. All right, well, we look forward to watching more of Ape Styles. Let's take a look at the next player that has made it to the final table. Uh, that is one hell of a picture. This guy looks amazing. A <laughs> globetrotting high roller, fourth Lithuania all-time money list. Nano, I'll give you the honors of uh, pronouncing his name. <laughs> yeah, uh, Lorenis Levinska. So I'm not exactly sure what to say, but uh, he's been around a long time. I, I, I forget the exact pronunciation of his screen name on other sites but mainly it's it says like his name in it you know like almost all guys right like ruin f right like it's just their their name somewhere in their screen name uh but you know he's he's a really good player we haven't seen him final table yet i'm a bit surprised but you know now he's here he's done really well as you can see in some tournaments and he's got 2.8 million winnings on gg poker 2 million live like clearly he plays a lot and He's one of those guys grinding out those 5Ks and 25Ks on the side, as you can see from his results. Uh, very good. Let's check out his hand history. Let's take a look at his hand, as it's a, a hand with a story, not one of these other hands where it's like pre-flop all in call. Like, nope, a lot of things have happened here. Uh, we see Jacks going up against King Jack. Well, if you take a look at this action, we've got a couple minutes. What stands out for you the most? Well, the thing is, you know, you can see that he. Hero calls with the two jacks on this board. 
It's a little scary because with Pocket Jax, it's not the best bluff catcher in the sense that you block uh, the the King Jack type hand that you're trying to pick off as a bluff, right? And uh, But his opponent, you know, actually does have the King Jack. So sometimes, yeah, you got the blockers, but it doesn't mean that you should fold because uh, they, they could have those kind of hands too. And it's, it's a big hero call, you know, of course, in, in the tournament and uh, really well done against, uh, it looks like, David Peters in this Artyom was at the table as well. I look forward to watching Artyom make it to another final table. He'll I absolutely back. love the way that he played it. He'll be back, yeah, hopefully. I mean, this week we had 267 entries. That is so cool. It seems that uh, Levinskas has played a lot of these high roller super millions as well. And this is just the very first time that he's made it to the final table. Maybe he's like, what the hell is happening? Michael Demo is final tabling every week. <laughs> he's shipping all of them. Why am I not making any final tables? Well, he got the job done today. But he obviously comes in as one of the short uh, stacks. We've got two more players to cover. Let's go ahead and hop to the next player. Uh, TikTok, Ma, CLK. <laughs> well, let's go with TikTok. A mid-stake player, first Super Million, Super Millions appearance. And he's won a $1,000 satellite to get into this tournament. So not as epic as the other stories, but that's still pretty damn cool. Another player that satellited his way into the high roller Super Millions. Yes, yeah, so that's three like satellite players that don't normally play so big. Uh, that you can see him here. Uh, man, I forget his name, but I I, I know this guy. I, I know this guy. Uh, but normally he plays two hundred dollar tournaments, and you know he plays like probably like all the live tournaments. Man, I can't remember his. I, I think it's like oh, I just can't remember his name. But anyways, uh, you know he's coming <laughs> in seventeen big blinds. I, I I know this guy. I didn't know who he was before until I saw his little picture here. Uh, but, uh, you know, he doesn't play that big, but, you know, he's, he's very good, actually. But, you know, when you're playing, when you satellite in, you're against a bunch of sickos and you got to be a little bit uh, scared sometimes. Try to look it up for you, but I uh, don't really have much for you to help out. Let's take a look at the hand that TikTok had that brought him to uh, this final table. As he seems to be rather adventurous as well, because that is one hell of a move on the turn against Darren Elias, of all people. Uh, that's very ballsy with that King Jack. Yeah, it's a very ballsy play. You know, he put the three bets to King Jack suited, flops the flush draw, bets small, and then jams in on the turn. And you know, a lot of times when they call you on that flop, it looks like they got an ace, but he's just thinking, look, as long as you don't got the ace queen, you're probably not calling. And a lot of guys will defend weaker aces in like pocket tens or eights or something. It's a big play. Uh, it's good to see that all these like mid stakes uh guys that satellite in they're not scared they're always making big plays and that's what you should be doing because if you satellite in and you're just playing aces and kings you ain't going to make this final table you're going to get min cash or worse probably at best you know and that's, well that's to, to be fair is. nano if you normally play hundred dollar satellites and then you min cash for i don't know let's say 20k i think that is one hell of a day at the office come on now yeah, i agree <laughs> but yeah, it's really cool to see. That means we have got one more player to cover before we go ahead and hop into our final table for tonight. And uh, that is Oasis. I think this is the very first time we have somebody from uh, Venezuela actually make it to the final table. I don't think we've seen that before, but definitely no stranger to this tournament as Oasis has played eight super millions already. This is his second cash. He does come in as the shortest uh, chip count or with the shortest stack of course of the final table but it's really cool to see a new face at the final table he's a high roller first one from venezuela hasn't done one of super millions yet but this is his time to get all those buy-ins back right he's played every single one <laughs> uh, you can see he also plays short deck he just plays high rollers all the time uh, you know we've got a lot of like unknown names here uh and satellite players but it's going to be a good mixture of players i think well, let's take a look at the hand that Oasis had that helped him get to this final table. And I feel like it's something we've sort of seen before. Do you want to break this one down, Nano? Or no, shall you I got it? it. You got it. You got it. <laughs> All right. So we've got a couple, you know, we've got some little betting action. And then we've got somebody shoving. And he's like, oh my goodness, someone is shoving. I mean, that's a lot of lines to shove. But he's like, I've got queens. I'm not going anywhere. I'll call. And then another call. Kings, aces, queens. And you're like, oh my goodness. That's where you bust out. Just one time emoji, and you spike the queen on the flop, and you'll be very happy. You take it down 600,000 chips, and I, I think it's very safe to say that this is actually a hand that brought him to the final table. <laughs> he needed some serious help here. <laughs> yeah, definitely agree. Um, 
Yeah, well, he, he's running hot, so he, he might be able to get it done. Well, I mean, he does come in with, well, 14 big blinds is not that bad. That doesn't mean that you have to make a move immediately. Of course, you don't really want to go down to four or five big blinds unless you're Lucas Greenwood and you can still ship the entire tournament. But I think 14 big blinds, you know, you at least have potential to ladder one or two spots. And obviously, if you get the right hand, then you may as well just go for it. Find your spots well. Let's take a look at the seat selection. I do believe that we're in for a little surprise. I think there's going to be a little issue, but... Uh, we're almost ready to go with the 11th edition of the High Roller Super Millions. I'm just pumped, man, that we had 267 people sign up this week, Nano. That is such a big increase. Really awesome. Yeah, um, so here's our final table. Who you got today? I think you feel like you're going to pick correctly. That's well, What's your pick, Roddy? Uh, in Dutch, there is a saying. I mean, it's kind of, uh, there's a saying in English as well, which is a bit similar. But in Dutch, we say, drie keer is scheepsrecht. Since uh, Rune F made back to back to back final tables and he comes in as the chief leader and he's clearly an absolute crusher, I'm gonna go for the Nano Noko pick and I'm gonna pick the guy with the most amount of chips. I think that Rune F is gonna take it down today. I think Rune F definitely got, you know, he's got the skill set to take it down, he's got the chips, you know, he's done better every single time he's played. We're going to do the seat selection swap. I think no matter where he swaps to, you're still going to pick Ruin F. I think that's a very good choice. I'm going to pick someone. I don't even need to see the seat selection. I'm picking Darren Elias. I think he's going to be our second two-time champion in the 10K Super Minutes. I would love to see it. I'd like to see records made. He's a very good player. I don't know how he's going to get to the win because I have no idea how he did it last time, but he was just super solid. I think he can get it done. I honestly feel that what you said was pretty correct, that it was more about FU Tim Riley and that Darren Elias was just always there. He was kind of surviving, staying out of trouble, and everybody else was going ham, and eventually he picked up a couple of important pots, went on the run, and just never slowed down. I think that is pretty much all I remember from Darren Elias winning the final <laughs> table. Yeah, I definitely agree with you that. You know, so we got three satellite low-stakes, kind of mid-stakes players. It's Uber Celta, TikTok and bluff me not. So these three guys, I think it could be a little bit wild card depending on how they play, but they're they're not scared too. They're willing to make plays. Um, Uber Celta, he's the guy that, well, he he wanted to sell ninety percent, right? And he sold zero percent. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the best thing that has ever happened to him. Already cash for forty six k. Let's go. Imagine you if mean... he would have actually sold all ninety percent. At first, he'd be like, "Yeah, I've got like nine k in the bank. That's awesome." And then he's like, "Oh my god!" He's like, "This is the worst beat I ever got in poker. Why did everybody believe in me?" <laughs> yeah. So, so what he's yeah he's guaranteed forty six k like you said man if he get a couple of ladders he couldn't get a hundred thousand dollars like huge for him but you got to remember his GG poker winnings is so low like it's oh my god what is it let me let me take a look where <laughs> there it is it's fourteen thousand lifetime on a GG <laughs> you just know this guy is just like ladder me up ladder me up please. Well, I mean, he's already on cloud nine. And I think at this point, like, okay, you can obviously think about the laddering, but this is already a beyond amazing result. I mean, you've turned $100 into $46,000. At this point, the sky is the limit. I understand being a little cautious, but obviously there's no need to be overly cautious. He's clearly a good player. Otherwise, he wouldn't get this far, right? Like, yeah, people go on sick runs and they win 100. They, they can win satellites. But eventually, you've been put to the test as well. And I'm sure that he had to make a couple of difficult decisions to get where he was. I don't believe that this is like the sickest heater ever. So I think just believe in your fundamentals and don't get too carried away. You know, leave the sickos up to what they do and you just play your game the way that you know it, the way that you're comfortable and then hopefully he can turn it into a pretty epic run. Yeah, here we go. First hand up is TikTok pocket six against Darren Elias pocket four. What does Darren Elias reshove? What? And well, I like the reshove. You know, on one of these satellite guys, are they really going to hero call off pocket sixes here? It's just a big, uh, it's a big call if he does. I don't know if he can make it. This is bullying. This is bullying, Nana. This is, oh my goodness. And he does get him to fall. So Darren Elias coming right out of the gates hot with the reshove, with the force. And I, like, yeah, he probably wouldn't do that against the seasoned veteran, right? With the force. Like Michael Adamo is always going to call there. Like no matter what he has, he's like, well, I'm here to do <laughs> <so." laughs> I'm probably flipping. Who do you know? If I'm not, yeah. I'm going to two out it. Who knows? But uh, that, that was... 
they're like the very first hand of the final table and that's the perfect guy to do it you want to do it against the guys who satellite it in because they're they're going to open hands because they feel like they should open hands but they're not probably going to call for the tournament life unless they got it and that that's a really seasoned pro move from a darren elias and i like it and you know he got the best hand to fold you know what's a little bit telling as we have uh, Rune after man with back to back to back final table appearances pick up pocket tens here. You know it's a really cool fact that eight out of nine final tableists tonight are in on just one entry. This is all a single bullet for all of them. Besides Darren Elias, he actually entered three times, so he's the only one. And then obviously he's the one who immediately opens up shoving fours. He got four and fours again, by the way. But against uh, Runev, he's going to slow down. And Runev has a few more chips to work with as well. Ooh, this is a very a flop. spicy flop. Yeah. Darren Elias actually picks up an open in a straight draw. He's got position. Some chips are going to go in here. I think he's he should be playing the hand slow because of how deep they are. Uh, but it could get a little, little dicey on the turn. Lars Lusak has a little bit of it as well, right? He's got a gut shot. He's got the backdoor uh, flush draw. So this hand can get very gnarly. Runev is going to continue betting. As he's betting more than half pot. And Darren Elias is going to make the calls, of course, with the sevens. Ooh, what a... That would have been <laughs> a spicy turn card for uh, Lars Luzak, but he's up. Yep, so the two tens over pair is going to slow it down and check. He doesn't want to play a pot for all the chips right now. So he does check in. Darren, it's a tricky spot because you kind of want to bet because it looks like your opponent has like ace king a lot and then you don't want to get you kind of don't want to bet because you don't want to get check raised for all the chips uh he does decide to check and let's see what ruin f does decide to try to get some value it does kind of look like darren lies has pocket sevens eights nines pocket fours almost exactly probably doesn't expect his opponent to defend like a six suited this is a nice value bet here that is actually an amazing bet considering like we see the whole cards because I'd be very worried that he had one of the other cards. Like he could have also easily had a two pair hand. Like he could have had a, a six four maybe, right, or a, a five four something like that. Uh, obviously, against five four you'd be good, but six four or like a four three, like it's it's scary to make a bet like this. I don't think yeah. there are too many people who are willing to make it, but Rune F does, and he is uh, right now hoping that he doesn't see anything super crazy. Because imagine if Darren Alliance shoves here. That'd be <laughs> such a disgusting spot to be in. Darren Elias actually makes the call with the force. And he's going to receive the bad news that he is on the wrong end of things. What an amazing way for a chip leader to start the final table tonight. Yeah, he did a, that's a really nice value bet. You know, some people can't, they just see the, you know, double poor bearings like, oh, you know, it's probably better for me to just check and try to pick up, pick up a, sh a straight draw bluff or something like that. But the thing is, Darren Elias, if he had a hand like 7, 8, or 8, 9, probably would have just bet the turn of a straight draw bluff, right? So the thing is, when he checks it back, it really does look like he's got one of those middle pocket pairs. Uh, really well done value bet. I, I wanted to talk about, you know, you said all these guys have one, one bullet, right, besides Darren Elias into this yep. tournament. In, you know, there's a reason why these guys made it one bullet and everyone else didn't because everyone else put in all of the bullets, right? This is the very – you said this was the biggest uh, – N number of yeah, entries? The, yep, yeah, it's 267. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Adamo in for 10 bullets, uh, Divorce in for 10 <laughs> bullets, Hax in for 5 bullets, you know? That's why we got that so many. I actually had the lobby open a little bit earlier today, uh, but I didn't go down the list actually to really see who had the most amount of entries. But it does always, like, uh, when I go down the list and I see somebody entering, like, five, six times, I'm like, oh, my goodness. These people want to make a final table. We've got one of the shorter stacks is shoving a screen under the gun here, and he's going to be able to get it through. Uh, you'd love to see it if you're one of the shorter stacks and you really want to ladder at this final table. You're not too happy in general when you get called. Yeah. Um, so right now the situation is the short stacks actually aren't that short. They got some wiggle room to wait, mm -hmm. you know, 12 to 14 big blinds. There's a lot of guys like this. You can see Uber Celta open up the A7 suit. This is what I like to see from a guy who only who tried to sell 90% action because he should be getting a lot of credit. You know, hey, think about this, right? Like, you know, the other guys, they're all watching the, the, the final table, the live stream. They see the final table profile. This guy tried to sell, couldn't sell. This guy's going to be super tight. Early on, just open up a bit because everyone thinks you're only going to play aces and kings. And, you know, 30 minutes later, like, 
tighten up a bit because people think you loosen up. I think it'd be a pretty good strategy. By the way, did you saw what Bluff Me Not did like two hands ago? Uh, Lars Luzak tried to limp small blind against big blind and he just shoved immediately 4.6 million with ace rack. Like that's one hell of a play as well for somebody who's never been at the final table of an event this big, at least as far as we know. Yeah, I mean, like, like he's satelliting from a hundred dollar tournament, not a one thousand dollar tournament. You know, he went to the hundred, to the one k, to the ten k. He oh. also satellited into the twenty five k. Just oh, we got some straight draw pair action. This is this kind of sucks, right? Yeah, I have the feeling that this can get pretty ugly for Oasis. He probably looks at that half a million of chips in the middle, and he's like, "I could really use that a lot more than you can." Oh, and Rune just... F is he's gonna make the call. He's gonna make yeah. The call. yeah. He's going to make the call, I'm pretty sure. That's a 2x shove pot. Oasis looks like, got to go for it. It's good. bad news. Only 18%. Yep. Up. Oh, running hot. Can he? Oh, oh. oh, no. oh. that could be it. That looks like a lady, doesn't it? Yeah, but that's not good enough. Oh, but that's not good enough. <laughs> yeah. You improve to ninth place, sir. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Unfortunately, the shorter stack is eliminated, so he will, Oasis will go out in ninth place, walk away with $46,000. Now, needed a, needed a king there, a king or an eight, right? That would have helped. Yep. And... Hey, <laughs> you know what? Uber Celta, pay jump. <laughs> I mean, mate, with 4 million chips, I don't think he's really thinking of like every little pay jump right now. He's like, he's 4 million <laughs> chips. He's aiming at top three. He's looking at the top three, $270,000. Like, yeah, that's what we're selling for tonight. Like, I understand if you come in with like 1.2 or 1.4 million chips, then you're keeping a close eye on those pay jumps. But with 4 million chips, come on, these are all poker players, Nano. Like, they, they want to make some magic happen. Yeah, I definitely agree. But I should, I, I'm just, I want him to do really well. You know, I like to see the guy who put in a hundred bucks and tried to sell and couldn't sell, you know, just kind of like stick it to everyone. Just like, you know, yeah. you want to buy my act, you know, the next time he makes the, the super millions, he should put in his profile. You guys didn't win, buy my action and I shipped it for four hundred four hundred $500,000. And then maybe people will buy it. Look, who's raising nine do suited into Darren Against Elias. Darren Elias. Yeah, that's. Well, what a move. Uber Celta came to play here. Wow. I'm absolutely loving it. And I believe he tried to sell at 1.00 markup as well, yeah. right? Next time he should sell at like 1.75. He's like, I'm Uber <laughs> Celta, guys. <laughs> you guys miss your opportunity. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm rooting for the guy. You know, uh, I, I hope he does well. Like, I, he, he clearly came to play. He's not trying to ladder up, as you just said, right? Like, if you're opening nine dudes suited into Darren Elias in that spot, like, you know, most guys, they might try to limp, get a free flop, but they're usually not going for action. Look, Ruin F is just trying to attack these uh, these guys who satellite in with the ace dude suited, gets it done against Bluff Me Not. He's, he's a clear chip leader right now, and uh, I, I think I feel like he's already going to ship this tournament, but who knows? Anything could happen. <laughs> you know, like, uh, I like how he's playing right now. Yep, and this is obviously, I mean, we love the stories, we love an underdog story, and this is what poker is all about as well. It's not about the same guys making it to the final table over and over again, but with all due respect, this is probably a weaker final table than in some of the previous weeks, right? Because we had like one or two final tables where it felt like we had nine straight up monsters, just absolute top-notch tournament players. This one is a little more wide open, way more unknown players, and that doesn't mean that they're going to be weaker or, or well, they might be a bit weaker, but it doesn't mean it's going to be easy for Runef. But this is definitely a lineup where I think if you're someone like Runef, you're looking around, you're like, this could very well be my night. <laughs> yeah, I definitely agree with you. You know, it's one of probably the softer final tables, but there's no, like, actual, like, really bad players at this final table or anything. But, you know, it's not like, you know, Michael Adamo on my left, uh, you know, the Archer on my right, you know, all sorts of <laughs> these things that are just super crazy players. This is, seems like one of those final tables where it could be maybe easier to cruise through, kind of grind it out a bit. And um, that's guys like Darren and Elias and Ruin F are, are trying to grind out a bit more. Uh, looks like Lars Luzek, Yurti Dekani. I, I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce the name. Got the Ace King, reshuffle. But if, he, if that guy picks up some chips, He's going to put some hell on some people because he's willing to make the big call downs. He's willing to make the big bluffs. 
Now, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but other than you blessing Michael Ademo with just the sickest heaters and just winning everything, I feel like everybody else you pick, you kind of just put a curse on them. And Darren Elias so far has not taken a single hand down. If I was him, I'd be DMing him, DMing you right now and be like, Nano, please change your pick because this is not going well at all. All right, we've got some action here. Rune with the pocket three is going to open it up, but Jonathan Van Vliet, Ape Styles, is going to ship in the pocket jacks. And he will most likely get this through because that's just a little too much to call with threes. Definitely too much. And you don't want to double up uh, Ape Styles with pocket threes uh, in this spot. He wants to call. <laughs> it's always scary. Yeah. I, I've seen people use that, I want to call, right? And, but, you know, usually it means you're going to fold. But then they end up calling with pocket aces. It's like super, yeah, super yeah, 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 yeah. pro so trick. <laughs> You know, but it's the same with the, the my last hand emoji, where you're like, you're shipping small blind against big blind, and then a big blind who covers you is like, oh, my last hand, they call, and they've got aces, and I'm like, oh my <laughs> god, like, did you really have to do me like that? Then just use the ship it emoji or something like that, you know? But <laughs> <laughs> You got to ba balance out your, your emoji game. You know, that's important. Absolutely. If you don't, have good, you don't have a good emoji game, you can't play on GG, you know? You, you, you're going to get crushed. <laughs> In all honesty, I am actually sometimes like I want to spam emojis if I'm the one who's all inning, whether I'm weak or strong. And then I am thinking like, what kind of emoji should I use? You know, like if it's like, please call or please hurry up, doesn't mean I want him to fold because I'm weak. I'm like, I shouldn't use hurry up right now because it makes it seem like I'm weak. I have been thinking about that. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm thinking the snap cam is just going to get extra next level on the way people use it because i'm guessing people right now are using it like after hands finished i want to see people using it during the hands like can imagine like so you put someone all in on the uh like a bluff right and then you just like snap cam like you, you you're too weak to call or something you know like just like make fun of them in the middle of the hand while they're either time banking down i think like there's some there's some tricks out there i can imagine Oh, no, it's been happening already, mate. Like, I've seen some crazy <laughs> things with the snap cam. I've seen people like, just give me your chips already because I'm going to win this tournament. <laughs> like, they're screaming into the microphone. And I'm like, oh, my goodness, slow down, mate. All right, let's talk a little bit about this hand because our man Rune F, the chip leader of this final table, has now picked up two pair. This would, well, make it a full house. This would be the wrong moment for the Kani to uh, make a crazy move on the river. I like to see Rune F bet this river card. It's been checked down through. He is going to go for an over bet. The thing is, if your opponent had a piece, they would have bet the flop. They would have <laughs> bet the turn. It does seem he's got some kind of showdown value a little bit. Yeah, it's always salt. Someone always wants to show when there was a trips plus or two pair or something. You know, they, they always want to show it. <laughs> and now <laughs> Rune F is just going crazy. First with the tail, now that you suck. King seven against A6. Oh, Uber Celta. Are you going to make another sense for us here? Ubisoft, of course, one of the players that satellited in with a $100 ticket into $1,000, into $10,000, now into $62,000. And he's still sitting on 4 million chips. I think he's going to make a move here, man. He's like, I'm not going to let Rune have... Oh, he falls. Oh, yeah. okay. he's, like, oh, he's like, you know, I'll make some plays against uh, guys with less chips than me, like Darren Elias. But against Rune F, you know, I'll fold the A6, but... Pocket aces. Is... Yeah, I don't think he'd be folding this one, <laughs> no matter what happens. <laughs> this could actually be some trouble here for Lars Luzek. Uh, the Kani is going to open it up with ace eight suited from a relatively early position. A shorter stack at the table. Ten nine suited. He's like, nope, that's not my hand. Uber Celta on the other end with the aces. He's like, hmm, how much? <laughs> yeah, it's like, how much do you have? I would love to see him slow play and just stack, stack Lars Luzak now, but uh, I, I don't think he's going to do it because you're not closing the action. Yeah. It's hard to slow play from the small blind. You don't want to let Darren Elias into the pot as well. Play a tricky one. There's the three bet. No, I'm totally with you, and I like this move by Uber Celta. Definitely. Okay, wow. <laughs> Lars Luzak is like, well, no, 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 I don't believe it. I'm out of here. Like, if one of the guys that satellited in is going to three with me pre-flop, I am done. <laughs> it's the fold. Do you think, is yeah. there a chance he's making a move? No, there's, there's no chance. Uh, and he's right. He's spot on. <laughs> All right. We saw this like the three bet worked pretty well. Could I have aces or kings again? <laughs> Queen 10 offsuit on the button. He's like, nah, I'm going to stay out of trouble. And I don't hate that move. Still a lot of players to act behind him. I like the way he's playing so far. It's like, it's a bit straightforward, but I think it all makes, it makes sense to me, Nano. 
I can't blame him for anything he's done so far. And he even made a crazy move with the nine deuce. I'm feeling over Salta so far. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not worried about him. I think he's he's going to get uh -oh. a big payday. He looks like a top three kind of guy. Here we got King Jack suited. What does Lars Luzak do with the King Queen? Some people just call here. Some people reshove. I'm not sure what he's going to do, but I think they think it. Oh, just the all in. Darren Elias trying to shut it out. Can King Queen make this call? I don't know. He makes the, a nice play from Darren. Just that when there's guys with ten big blinds, they're going to have to. You're going to have to fold hands like King Queen normally and. You get it done because imagine if Darren Elias just min raised like a lot of people, uh, the, his opponent would have probably won the pot, right? You know what's funny is that this time Darren Elias was in for three bullets, right? When Darren Elias won the high roll as Super Millions in week two, he was also in for three bullets. I do really wonder if we would count the amount of entries he's had over 11 weeks so far. Yeah, I think he's played a high roller Super Millions 47 times at this point, Nana. <laughs> well, 33 to be exact, you know. <laughs> um, but Rune F opens. And yeah, you know, Darren, right, he, he's had the worst hand multiple times, but has gotten his opponent to fold, right? Like the, the fours into the sixes, the mm -hmm. king jack now into the king queen. So... It's just like with ICM and final tables, if you put your opponents all in, even though they got like 20 big blinds or whatever, they, they still not going to call you very light. And um, oh, actually, this one's going to be a little bit interesting. Just snap call from Lorenis. Ace, ace. Chop it up. Oh, no, no, no. Chop it up. No, no. <laughs> you don't want to see it? Nah, everybody likes to chop. Nobody deserves to lose ace three <laughs> against ace four at that point. Like everybody Runef. loves to chop up, right? <laughs> uh, but you know, um, you said it last. I don't know if you remember you saying it, but you said I I'm gonna miss Rune F because he's got a good emoji game. But Rune F's been emojiing the crap. He just said, "Hurry up, that last hand," because <laughs> it's yeah. a chop pot, <laughs> and it's a small pot as well for him. Like, oh, <laughs> look at these plebeians duking it out over one million chips. Sitting on his ground. We've got a very similar scenario here. Ace four against ace three. Will TikTok make the color as the shortest stack at the table? Bluff me not. Definitely feeling the uh, ace racks. Huh? This is the third time that he's shoving an ace rack preflop. Uh, he rightfully so. You know, these guys are short stack. He got his opponent to fold the chop. They're really well done. You can see TikTok and Lorenis, they play the ace rag really different in these like really shallow spot situations looks like TikTok is just at this point just looking for any kind of good hand he's basically saying please fold to me so i can shove the small blind but it's going to be either bluff me not or lorenis who's going to be opening the spot it's bluff me not does lorenis reshove the fours i don't know it's, it's a tricky spot <laughs> i mean bluff me not has been opening three hands in a row now that's so I think point. at that point, like, how likely is it that he's really got you dominated? I like the shove here with force. Makes a lot of sense to me. Good luck. Wow, and he gets the fold as well immediately. That's How much more was that? Like six, eight hundred eight, 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 eight more, eight, eight hundred thousand. Yeah, you gotta, you can't raise call off 10, 11 big blinds with king eight suit. I think it's just like, it sucks because clearly he was flipping. But uh, it, those chips are really valuable to you because he's got 44 big blinds. He can splash around. But let's just say he calls it all in, gets down to 30-something big blinds, pays a couple of round of blinds. He's going to be handcuffed really. Uh, I'd be, be at 36, even if he would lose that hand. Come on, don't make it more dramatic. 36 is plenty. I mean, I, mean, like, I, what's I don't the, think anyone's what's... calling the king a suited there for 10 big blinds. It would be a big call. Be really no, it was big less call. than 10. I think it was like 7. 7 and some change. can't be 7. Look at the He's got 1.3 million now. Yeah, well, he, he like, just won a small blind, a big blind, and the antis. He had less than a million, I think. Can't be. I, okay, let, let's say it was eight. Eight <laughs> more. But you're Possible. like, he would be down to 30 big blinds. It's like, no, even if Bluffy would lose it, he'd be at 36, Nana. You're being dramatic over here. Uh, math, math, math is tough. Math, math is tough. It's all right. You just got to remember. You got to remember, Lorenis put in some chips in this pot, so he has 1.5, 1.4, 1.5 million now. You got to remember that. <laughs> now, obviously, uh, like eight big blinds, you're right. These are variable chips. And obviously, this is already an insane spot for a bluff me not. And if you're finally at a final table of an event this big, I understand you don't just want to lose eight big blinds when you don't really have to. Now, let's see what the shortest stack at this final table is going to do with King-9. He's going to shove it all in. And I think he will get it through. Nobody's yeah, going to be too thinking. eager to call he's that. He's like, 
Thank God I got this one through because usually you get looked at when you got the King Nine suit, you're going all in with like so little chips. You're like, man, someone's going to call, but I have to shove here. Safe. Oh, oh, Darren might be out of this tournament against Ruin F. I'm not sure how he's going to play it, but I can definitely see well, Darren reshoving to Ace Queen because Ruin F's been open a lot and he's got a massive stack. They guys play with each other a lot. I, you know what could have maybe saved him if TikTok Machine would have shoved the Ace Four. If then Ruin F would have came over the top, then there is a chance that Darren Elias would have been able to get away from this hand. Right now, this definitely spells disaster for Darren Elias as he does go all in, two point six million, and obviously Ruin F is going to make the snap call. He's going to give us a little emoji no, as well. No. The goodbye. I knew it. No audio is not out of sync, guys. I just knew it. But he still needs to avoid the queens. Oh my goodness, what a flop. Well, a deuce. he needs a deuce. Chop it up. Chop. Can we get a magical deuce on the ring? That could be a deuce. It could be a deuce or an ace. Oh my god, it's a three. That was close. <laughs> well, wow. Rune F already was the chip leader in Nano. He is now the overwhelming chip leader with 11 million chips. And the Nano Noko curse is back. All right, where's Michael Dom? I would have picked them with one big blind. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that, Darren Elias, he came in in third. He won this tournament. Wow, he, this is a terrible performance. You can't blame him. He actually got a lot of big folds from his opponents, but you can't blame him for shoving the ace queen there. It sucks because there's like a couple guys with pretty short stacks, but Ruin has been opening some garbage hands, right? And uh, this tournament's going to be over quick. Ruinel's just running away with it. Uh, I'm going Uber Celta for second, though. I would like to see him ship a bunch of monies. <laughs> Maybe we can rephrase that sentence into a very unfortunate performance rather than a terrible performance because it wasn't a terrible performance, right? He played the hands the way he was supposed to play them. He just got very unfortunate when he decided to make some moves. I'm a results-oriented player, man. I'm a poker player, you know? You <laughs> just so gotta mean. be like, you, you, you didn't do well, you, you did bad, you know? I mean, for for him, he's he. you know how disappointing he's gotta be. You, you don't go yeah. to the final table in third thinking, like, I'm gonna get eighth place. You're like, wor like worst case scenario, I'll get like fifth, you know, which is still all right, but sucks. Maybe I get third, maybe I get second. Whoa, look at this! Lorenis betting the ace-10. Can he put the pressure on bluff me not? You know, bet the flop. Bet the turn. You should bet be betting these turns with these inside straight draws on a scary card like King because your opponent has like these jacks, these ace threes, these seven eights that just have to check fold a lot. Can Bluff me not make this call? He does. And wow, the but the queen on the river. That is disgusting. What an amazing call by Bluff me not. But Levinskos gets there on the river and now he's like, all right, well, this seems easy. I actually... Yeah. yeah. Uh, Is there another way he could have played the river here, Nano? No, you can't. You got half pot. Your opponent, like, has to hear. What are you just going to be like, 200k? You might be letting your yeah. opponent get away. But uh, your opponent does have to pair a good amount, actually, on this river card. Queen jacks, uh, king jacks. There's just a lot of hands. That... I, I don't yeah. see anyone making a smaller bet with that stack size. I think it's played. I just think it's funny that Bluff Me Not, you know, it's got it's got the perfect name in that spot. Like, you can't bluff me. And, you know, he put in the chips when he was ahead, put out the chips when he was behind. And, yeah, well played. Just to wrap it up, obviously, Darren Elias did walk away with $62,000. But that is obviously not what he was hoping for after firing three bullets into this event and then coming into the final table in as a third as well in chips. He was able to win oh, the High oh. Roller Super Millions on June 23rd. I, I got to stop that's... you. Did you see Bluff Me Not? Uh, it's Lars Luzak limped the button, King 7 said, Bluff Me Not, who just lost that pot, raised Jack 7 offsuit from the small blind and got his opponents to pull. He's wild. It's just, he's wild. He, he's wild. He's wild. I love him, this Bluff Me Not. I love him, all these guys that don't have real names on them, but they're just like satellite players who who playing crazy a little bit, right? I think TikTok's probably the one that's playing the least crazy of them all. Trying to, he, and, but TikTok's got two pay jumps, given how short mm -hmm. he was. And that, that's already a nice payday for him. I like to see a shove here if they say. I don't know. What do you think? I hate Ace Eight, mate. <laughs> I mean, obviously not. And I know runes half hand. And then yes, but uh, the thing I don't know. Uh, this is I an think early position raise as well, though. The thing is, you call here, 
you're going to have to check fold so many flops. Ace, I think you just got to close your eyes against a guy who's got 11 million chips. Oh, my God. He just folded the ace. I don't know about that one. I that's... don't hate it, Nano. I don't hate it. Let the I, man let her. Why would you light your chips on fire with ace eight offsuit? It's terrible, mate. Get out of here. <laughs> I don't know, man. Ruin F's, he's got 11 million chips. He's clearly going to open, like, really wide. Uh, Even I, at least early position, flopped. though. Don't you give the early position, the under the gun race, you don't give that a little bit of credit? Credit, but he's still going to open queen jack offsuit, jack 10 offsuit, probably 7 9 suited. You know, it's that's too okay. Tight, this one I, I don't think. like. I don't like the, the limb from the small blind here. If you've got like nine big blinds, I mean, he does flop best, so uh, who am I? But I don't really like that because more often than not, Runev is going to make a play on you, right? And then you already committed half a blind extra for what? Yeah, um, yeah, it's it, it kind of sucks here, but you know. I like the check. He got uh, the limper to throw out a bet here. A limper probably would bet this flop. You got to shove now. I mean, yeah. you're out of position. You got eight big blinds. What is there to wait for? He just calls. Okay. Um, I I don't know about this. I think a lot of times you let your opponent just check back the, the turn a lot and get free equity. And Ruin <laughs> F is confused. He just ships it in. He will call this time. He will, he'll call. He's got to call. He's right. got to, because Ruin F's going to shove like flush draws, right? Straight draws. Ah, you can't fold this, mate. You've already committed half your stack. Come on, TikTok. Let's get it over with. Maybe he's recording a snap cam for us, but he has to call this one. And he does make the call. And I think we're going to chop it up. <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness. Oh, Ruin F just laughing at him with the Daniel Negron. That's so mean. Is that a five? Could be it a five. Could it, it, that's it is. It is. Oh my five. goodness, the river for TikTok. Let's go. Justice. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's insane. What a run out. Yeah, uh, that was pretty funny because Rune asked him. What... <laughs> His emoji was like perfect when he, he hit that too, just laughing. But then now he's just, oh man, that was that was crazy, man. man TikTok, like, uh, he, he, got, he got unlucky and then lucky, but he saved justice <laughs> next payout is uh, eighty three thousand, as you guys can see in the bottom left and after that it goes up to 112 so definitely a big moment there for tiktok not just surviving but actually doubling up and suddenly he's no longer the shortest stack at this final table as we have the connie herb dean you know who herb dean is right no 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 but i heard you say he's an <laughs> mma fighter i don't watch mma but no, he's an mma fighter referee yeah yeah, he's a referee. He's like one of oh, the most well-known referees. Is he so, why is he so well-known? Uh, he does a lot of the biggest fights out there. And like, he's cool. He gives cool interviews. And Herb Dean is just very chill. I feel like almost everyone likes Herb Dean. And so does Dikani, apparently. <laughs> yeah, but he needs some chips, though. He needs to, he needs to pick a different avatar to get some chips. This guy, this one's... The, <laughs> he's just on the sidelines donating uh, one big blind, two big blind here and there right now. Regardless, Bluff Me Not opens Ace Queen suited. Ruin F defends Queen Jack offsuit on the button. Pretty weak hand, but he's thinking, look, I got the chips. As long as people play a little bit passive, I can take some stabs here and bluff me not. Normally, you see Ace Queen here, you're like, oh, this is a good C bet board. Just bet the flop at the turn, probably. But he's actually trapping his opponent and also containing the pot so he doesn't have to get put to the test by the river. Yeah, I also think he's just playing it a bit safe here because bluff me not, it's easy to make plays against the guys with 1 million chips or 1.2 million chips because it's pretty straightforward. You don't want to get in very gnarly positions here against Rune F, who does have you covered by a whole lot because this is an epic moment. Don't forget that bluff me not also satellited into this final table. So I think it makes sense that he played it a bit slower and just kind of uh, try to keep the pot a little bit smaller. Because you don't want to play for all your chips here against the one guy that's got you covered. Exactly. And that's the thing. Whenever you're up against chip leaders, you'll see these kind of like big, bigger stacks, but obviously not as big. Play Take some more passive lines. And as a chip leader, that helps you hand read really well uh, in a sense that you can defend those weak hands like Queen Jack also in the button, you know, and win extra chips that you probably might not be able to get to normally because of how you expect these uh big bigger stacks to play their hands post flop you know um i also believe that we are just a couple weeks away i think it's roughly two weeks away 
from one of these high roller super millions being an official WSOP event. I believe it's number 83. So that's going to be amazing, Nana. I look Wait, which one's the, which one is number 83? What did you would you say? I think a uh, high roller super millions official WSOP. Oh, event. that one's gonna be the biggest one, guarantee. Um and bracelet on the line. <laughs> yeah, that that's gonna be the one. And just Let's get all our superstars in there, right? Let's get our Adamos. Let's get our Arter. Let's you know, let's get all our favorite players. Uh, F you, Tim Riley. Like, I, I would like and put throw in Holiday in there. I want to see Holiday back. I want to see him <laughs> just put some six four offsuit uh, call down for the tournament life. <laughs> uh, but you know, just just some epic epic hands. That's gonna be a fun one. You're always forgetting about my man Jesus, man. 20, big will 20. He deserves to be mentioned. If you mention the goats, the man keeps on cashing, keeps on finding tabling, and hopefully we'll see some Sakwan in that as well. Let's take a look at this hand, though. This bluff me not with the sevens is still in the lead against Rune F, his king, queen. And he should be able to make another call if Rune F does decide to bet here. Does she does check. Not. And uh, that's what you like to see when you got two sevens. You're just thinking, please don't bet, yeah. please don't bet. River card is a ten, bit pretty, pretty annoying because of course your opponent could hit the ten. It's it's hard to value bet and get called by worse, but it's definitely possible. It's going to go for a check. We haven't seen any snap cams yet today. Well, what is that all about? Runes have emoji game, perfect. Snap cam usage though. Little underwhelming, Nana. <laughs> yeah, there's not there's not snap cam in today. It doesn't look like uh, because only one guy has done it so far. F you, Timber. I would like to see at least the winner should be mandatory snap cam yeah. for us, uh, uh, right? You know, <laughs> like yeah. little that'd, that'd celebration nice. dance. I mean, that went check check on the river as well. So bluff me not picks up even more chips, and he's now over five million. Rune F once upon a time was over eleven. He has now dropped to 9.5. Obviously, still our dominant ship leader. Ape Style's been very quiet so far, by the way, Nano. We haven't seen much of him. Uh, and he's you know, just playing solid. You don't you only got 20 big blinds. You can't really make too many moves. Just let Ruin F take as many blinds as you can. Reshove on him when you can. Um, Ace nine suited. Might get some some play here. Let's hold to him. Yeah, 16, 17 bigs is what we're working with. He is going to go with the race and will most likely get it through. TikTok is definitely uh, the most passive player. Like, I think we can already kind of come to that conclusion, right? He's definitely here yep. to ladder a little bit. I agree. So that means race is big blind as much as you can, uh, yeah. especially when uh, there's a guy of nine big blinds coming around. You know, like uh, people are going to play a bit tighter. And I want to say, Ooh. I think. Bluff Me Not has been uh, most active uh, yep. of the guys who satellited in. And then Uber Celta is, you know, he kind of chooses his spots. He, he gets a little crazy here and there, and he plays a little tight in some spots. So I like to see him open up these sevens. So. Interesting spot as well for Rune F here. He's going to make the call with Ace-5 and will pick up a gut shot. And then we've got the sevens and nines looking it out. Probably both players not super unhappy with that board. Of course, the 10 is a bit of a scary card. But only one over for these pairs is not too bad. So Uber's going to check. Bluff me not. I would like to see him bet. It's just like, you don't want to let two guys get a free card. Oh, he does my check. goodness. Uh, oh, uh, my goodness. It's not fair, Nano. <laughs> the straight gets there for Rune F against the sevens and the nines. They might be able to save some chips because they're very worried about that 10. But what a turn card. I think Uber should probably fold just because there's someone else behind him to act. Those chips yeah. mean a lot to him if he if he has to call here and not doesn't know what to do on the river. But I don't know if Luffy not can fold closing action. He's 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 usually the best hand here because he, he's up against like two spades, you know, the five like seven five offsuit, those type of hands a lot. I think I would look him up on the turn and play the river card. And he does. That's not oh, a good that's... river card. Nope, that's the river card where you're going to feel that your nines might just still be good. I mean, unless he was worried about a big blind special here from Rune F, like a, a 4-3 or a 4-deuce, but, well, 4-deuce would be terrible. Or maybe like a 5-4 or something. But it's, I don't know if he can get away from this. I actually think he will, though. That's a big bet by uh, Rune F. 
With the nines, it's still just nines, Nano, and Rune F can have anything. He can have a deuce. He can have a ten. So I think I, he will I like. Get it. I like the turn call. The river, uh, it's just really it's tough. Depends on. I think it's a nine fold because the thing with two nines is you don't even beat like ace ten and ace ten and king tens. These are big value betting hands in these spots. So it's a nice fold. It's also you gotta remember those chips are important. That's what you like to think about, right? Like mm -hmm. if I call these one point five million. I'm right. It's great. If I'm wrong, though, what happens? It turns me into the same stack as Lorenis and, and Van Fleet. That, that'd be really bad. I think the fold is good. He just chills in second place right now. Yeah, I'm with it as well. There's just too many hands that beat you. And on top of that, Rune F was the chip leader. He could have any two cards. Like There's just like no guarantee there that uh, your nines are going to be good against the big blind special. And it's such a big bet as well. If it's smaller, then maybe you can consider a crying call and just really hope you're good. You can see Runaf putting some pressure here on Uber Celta and he's going to steal his blinds. Uber Celta was feeling a little feisty in the beginning of this final table, but he's definitely been tightening up a little bit. I don't mind it, you know, like... Just just ladder up right now. Right now, it's just Runaf just taking... I'm surprised Runaf didn't even think about opening the button, though. I guess he respects uh, Ape Style's big blind a lot because Ape Style's, you know, he's still going to fight. Uber's going to open up the ace-queen, and does Van Fleet defend the 8-9 offsuit? I kind of think he will in position. It's a big raise, though. It's not a min raise. I'm going 3x over here. He's going to make the call with 8-9, and that is an absolutely horrible board for Ape Styles. And Uber Celta is loving it. He's probably like, oh, don't have diamonds, don't have anything weird. But you're going to be more than fine here with Ace-Queen most of the time. He's going to take it down. What do you make of that uh, pre-flop bet sizing going for the 3x there, small blind against big blind? Do you like that? In general, you want to be making it bigger, small blind versus big blind, because they're going to, uh -oh. the opponent gets to close the action. Yes. Yeah, uh, Sorry, I think Lars Luzak is in trouble here. <laughs> a shorter stack at the table. Pocket sixes in the big blind against the guy who opens pretty much every single round. Just turns out that this time Runev has kings. Uber gets a yeah, this oh. bro. I mean, is there any way Lars Luzak yeah. wins his hand? Like you're against the guy who's got eleven million chips, who's clearly running hot, playing good. <laughs> it's it's, a, it's over. Well, I mean, he can flop a six. That's a way to win the end. <laughs> hello. Uh, hello. I've got the Cowboys. Well, Lars needs a six and a six only at this point. And that is still what it's going to be for now. No additional outs. Needs one of the last two sixes. Can we at least get a heart? Nope. Not even close. Wow, that was quick. <laughs> well, I mean, no like, suspense. Usually uh, someone just puts in one emoji. Ruin has been putting four emojis throughout that hand. Just like... I'd be tilted if I was Lars Luzak. Like, man, what's wrong with this guy? Isn't he a pro? Why does he keep that taunting me? But I like what Rune F's doing. Well, Rune, or, uh, Lars will walk away with $83,000. And that means that the next payout is going to be over $100,000, $112,000 for the player that will bust in sixth place. How cool is that? Two of these guys, Nano, invested $100. And they have turned that $100 at least into one hundred and twelve thousand dollars that's just insane and one guy Absolutely. put it turned one thousand dollar and satellite it in too and he's you know TikTok, right and he's yeah. rented up to it's just this like you said at the beginning maybe this is one of those softer final tables just because of all these satellite winners and i i think i agree with you uh you know has got 12 million chips he's got <laughs> Satellite winners with four million chips. The 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 sickos only got fifteen big blinds. They 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 can't do anything, but they flop in sets right now. I mean, eventually one of these guys got to combine their stacks to battle this Ruinef for for that second spot. Is it safe to say that right now Ruinef has more chips than everybody else at the final table? Oh, well, uh, I want to like say it's... it's safe to say that TikTok's going to lose almost all his chips here if he shoves here. Because we saw in that hand yesterday before he shoved his flush draw with that before when he three bet that king jack suited here. He's he's bet the flop. He made a play at the King Seven suited. You turn a flush draw. I think I think he's just gonna shove it and just lose it all. Well, unless he gets a club on the river. Let's see what TikTok decides to do. He's got 1.3 million chips, which is still, uh, I believe, yeah, it's like 11 bigs. I mean, shoving is very tempting, of course, with uh, almost a million chips in the middle. He's thinking about it for a while. That shot clock is running down. He's going to make a bet, actually. Half-size pot bet. Hmm. He's, trying to, he's trying to... 
he took so much time. He's like, man, I, if I had aces, well, how would I? How much would I bet? And he's thinking, I bet half pot, trying to make it, trying to get a ten to fold. Now, Lorena is here. Pocket deuces makes the call. I like the just call here because you know. He doesn't want to let his opponent get away from like a hand like ace ten, pocket jacks, king tens, and you know because they probably might not want to call that shove uh, on a turn. And now what does he do? Uh, will TikTok turn his hand into a bluff or not? He's got king high on this board. I actually think he's gonna check. I think he will give up. I get the vibe he's gonna chase. Like I only got half pot left. Yeah. If he does shove, it would look really credible because it doesn't look like you ever try to get a 10 to fold here, but it would obviously not work. Just given how I think he's, he's going to check, Nano. I think he's going to check. He's like, you know what? I'll live to fight another day. I still have nine bigs to work with. Well, I make it eight, actually. Even a bit less. It stings. It hurts. But that's just not the run out he was hoping for. I think he's going to check. I think he should check, too. Um, yeah. yeah. And he saved himself. Yeah, because he would have been snap called. There would have been an emoji coming out of Ruin F. Goodbye. <laughs> All right. Ape Styles picking up the ace jack here. Uber Salta is actually going to be the one to act first and open it up with the ace four suited. Probably just a shove here from Jonathan or. Yeah. I, yeah. It's what, what Van Fleet's thinking is how loose is uber sell to opening uh, because if it's not that loose he's just thinking mm -hmm. TikTok is so short almost a guaranteed pay jump uh, it's tough with ace jack he does make the fold right he's just thinking look uh, i think uber is a hundred dollar satellite winner who's not going to open up but the thing is we've seen uber sell to yeah. open some spots we've seen him play tight uh, He's not afraid to open tough. in early positions. That's definitely what stands out to me, right? Mm -hmm. Like he opened the sevens earlier. He had another similar hand to that ace four suited we just saw. This is a spot where Levinskas could get into a little bit of trouble because Ruinev has picked up ace king, 40% uh, VPIP on fire, and he's definitely getting the hands to have that percentage and have that flame emoji. He's going to put in the three bet here with ace king, and he's going to get the immediate fault. All right, at this point, we're going to do some quick math real quick. Well, that's 8 million. That is make it 12 million. I guess the rest of the table has like half a million chips more than Rune F at this point. But that's all five of them combined, Nano. <laughs> <laughs> yep, uh, pretty good. That's some good quick math. Yeah, I think if TikTok had a couple more big blinds, Van Fleet probably would have shoved the ace jack. Uh, just, yeah, you, you know, when you're looking back on the stream, you're probably thinking, oh, God damn, why didn't I shove that ace jack? Things would be different. Yeah. Um, but it's also tricky, right? Because it's still like 14 bigs, I believe it was, for ape styles. And normally ace jack, like coming over the top of an under the gun opening of a satellite player, like I understand that he didn't do it, uh, but it would have been the right call this time. Ace queen yeah. on the other end, though. Yeah, against Larinus, so yeah, no way he's full. He's like, this guy, okay, he plays high rollers. He's going to be opening up still. Ace, queen, just going to ship it in. Yeah. Ape Styles is going to take his time, but he will go for the all-in this time, and he's going to be able to take it down pre-flop, unless Levenskis is feeling incredibly lucky, and this has the feeling he's going to hit an amazing flop, but 8-7 suited is uh, never going to call off this much. Uh you know, those that time make is really important, Lorraine. It's like uh if you you gotta you gotta remember we yes last week, right? We had Adamo and Chris Brewer playing yeah. with five second shot clock heads up for like hundred K. Like you, <laughs> you're gonna regret using that time bank unless you're expecting the bus sooner than heads up. Curious to see how this hand is gonna play out, because I feel like button, small blind, big blind, they can actually start tangoing with each other in this one. TikTok should probably just... Whoa, he's Ooh. going to make the move with the 6-5 suited. Uh, All right. That is, that is wild. That is, that's a bit wild. It, it works. It. Yeah. yeah, but that's really wild. I, I'm not sure if I'm in love with that. TikTok's just like, I'm on tilt. You know, I'm just going to shove it in now. And he's got the ace-king suited the next hand. Let's go, TikTok. Wow. What a, what a moment to pick up Ace King after you just ship it, jam it all in, free flop with the 6 5 suited. Next hand, you pick up Ace King suited. He's probably just going to take it down pre flop again, unless Levinskas mm. is like, you know what? A million chips. 
Yeah, that's a really tough spot. I think Ace Jack could easily be the best hand. That's the thing. It's six and eight. Calls. Snap calls. Oh, wow. Levinsko is going to get the bad news. He's going to need a jack. We could potentially chop it up as well with another three. A 10, three, or a jack is what Levinsko is hoping for right now. That could be a 10, but it's not a 10. Nah, it's a 9. Can't be a 10. Can't be a oh, 10. Yes. Too few pips. I know. I know. Sorry. I can't <laughs> count Nano. I'm good at math, but I'm very bad at counting pips on cards. <laughs> so TikTok, he, he, he's in fourth place now, just playing solid. And Uber Celta now. Two kings. Van Fleet. Can he get away from the two eights? Ooh. I think he might be able to because Uber, you know, he three bet the aces earlier, right? He's probably going three bet the kings this time. I wonder how much he's going to make it. Maybe like seven ten. Whoa, oh, he just calls, he just calls with us. the kings. And this can actually spell trouble bye bye. for bye ape bye. styles. <laughs> bye bye, ape styles. Guaranteed bye bye. Like, this is the perfect reshop spot. Like, oh. Ruin F opens. Bye bye. And look, look what Lorena says 8 4 offsuit, 1 8 dead. Oh, just calls. Okay, save. Welcome back, Ape Styles. Welcome back to the tournament. Uh, that is a flubber. He might even think that he's good, but he's definitely not good here with the eights. And Uber Celta probably a little worried now. He's like, uh oh, suddenly it's a three way with my kings. Uh, wasn't <laughs> not what wasn't I really planning on this. I like how Uber actually flatted the Kings, though. He's got that image where he probably doesn't, people don't expect him to be bluffing. So, and he knows Bruin F's opening garbage. It's the best way to pick up extra chips, maybe get some short sack to reshove on him. And I'm surprised Van Fleet didn't reshove the two eights and he actually is mm -hmm. going to save himself here. Uh, is going to call uh, this bet, though. He could easily have the best hand, so I don't fault him. And Bruin yeah. F's like, what are, you, what are you guys doing? They're not respecting my raises over here. Well, Ape Styles does pick up a couple of additional outs because a nine are go is going to be good now as well. So that improves his uh, odds quite a bit. He went from one out to five, Nano. That's <laughs> that's a decent improvement. Yeah, but Uber's probably going to just shove here because Uber Celta needs to protect his hand. Mm -hmm. Too many hands, that's just going to check back the turn, you know, like queen jacks, uh, pocket nines, pocket eights, like just ship it in and... Uh, Van Fleet, uh, he did lose some chips, but uh, at least he got to see four cards, and you know that he's still in the tournament. Well, this could be the moment. Then eleven bigs, Ace three suited, and he is gonna go for that pre flop all in. He's gonna be able to take it down, so he wins a couple chips back immediately. Well done, Ape Styles. It's not going anywhere. Well, I can. Ape Styles, he did get a fifth and a seventh before, so if he gets this spot, he can at least lock in the, the one in between, you know, the sixth place. But hopefully he can do better, you know. I would like – I've been hyping him up a bit, and, you know. It's, That's my emoji. Not sure yeah, if not I sure. love that. <laughs> this, I like the I always, squinty eyes with it, too. It's just yeah. like, hmm. You know what I also do is I uh, whenever I'm playing, I use the snap cam, and then I'm like, not sure if and, and i'm whispering it into the microphone and then most of the time i get a couple ha-has from around the table so that's pretty fun <laughs> queen, yeah, yeah, queen yeah. here for one of our shortest stacks does levinskis feel adventurous the answer is yes and he's going to be able to take it down as well because nobody really had anything there's got to be a guy out there right like he 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 doesn't use emojis. He only uses snap cams. But when he snap cams, he only does the emojis. <laughs> so he's just like squinting his eyes, right? Like not sure if. 100%. And, you know, he, they're, they're running cold. Like he's just doing all of them, right? But he, he only does the <laughs> snap cam version. <laughs> yeah, you think he grabs a bucket of ice, puts it over himself. He's like, I'm running cold, guys. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be something. All right. Uber Salta opening up one more time with the Jack-10 offsuit. And we've got... Jonathan Van Vliet, Ape Styles, shortest stack at the table, King-9 suited on the button. Would be a bad moment to make a play, because Bluff Me Not has got the Ace-Queen suited in the small blind. Yeah, Van Vliet, it, it's, it's got 11 big blinds, it's not that much, it's got forward equity, it's a, it would be a good hand to reach out with, it's got the King blocker, but uh, it's just you're just a little bit too short, I, I like the fold there. Bluff me not, ace queen suited. I like to see him just ship it. I think it's just uh, 
lock it down. Don't let your opponent make a play at you and get, try to get it in. The two satellite guys going up against each other. My last hand. I love it, mate. I love it. <laughs> All right. These guys may not be the poker superstars. I mean, obviously, Ape Styles isn't well known and Rune F is very well known as well. But they, they're giving us a fun show. I love the emoji spam. I love the usage. And I love that move as well with Ace Queen. It's not an easy call to make. If you're new to this stage and you don't normally play for this amount of money, I, I still like that shelf, Nano. Yeah, despite satelliting in, these guys actually play really good. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, they're playing how the pros would play. You know, Ace Queen just would reshove. We saw Darren Elias reshove uh -oh. Ace Queen. Early. Uh oh, oh, King oh. 10 into Ace King. TikTok just waking up in the right spot. So he's going to have a lot of chips here if he dodges the 10. So far, so good. Can TikTok stay alive? Uh oh. No, actually, it doesn't matter. He's got the Ace of Hearts as well. So reducing one of the outs. And that needs to be a 10. That's paint, so that is not a 10. TikTok, all of a sudden, second in chips, 4.7 million. Earlier, he was barely scraping by Nano. He was almost out with that King 7 hand. And look at him now, second in chips. Yeah, and it, all it took, it's like, imagine he didn't shove that 6-5 suited to pick up a couple of big <laughs> yeah. lines. He would have a lot, a little bit less chips, like a million less, right? Um, in really good position, man. I think TikTok's loving it, right? Because earlier in the tournament, we see him trying to ladder up. He, then he finally opens the King 7 suited, trying to make some bluffs. And mm. uh, he's looking at he's limping. He's like, you know, I got a lot of chips here. I'm pretty much locked up top three. What's the point of raising and trying to lose all my chips now? Do you think he was maybe trying to set a trap, hoping that Rune F would raise him and then he would just shove? Um, I want to say that's probably the right play to do. I don't know what he would have actually done if he would have okay. limp called or, or limp shoved. Yeah. I would like <laughs> to see the limp shove, uh, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure what he would have done. <laughs> let's go check well, check on the flop. Yep. And well, that's a decent run out for TikTok. He was actually behind on the flop, of course, because Rune F did make top pair with a jack three offsuit. But in the end, TikTok, his hand is still in the lead. He's wondering right now, how much should I bet? I think he's going to bet real small, like 225 or something. Oh, he feels small, way bigger than that. Right. Uh, yeah, a little bit bigger, but you know. It, it's hard to be actually bluffing in this spot for him. So he's like, mm, I can't make it too big because then, I don't know. Yeah, he's just hoping for some crying calls from like a queen. Somehow an ace, uh, probably not an ace. <laughs> just hoping for something. Nice fold. Yep, Runef. Uh, what about Runef betting on the flop? Why do you think he did not bet on the flop when he had top air? I'm not really sure, and I think he regrets it now. <laughs> I think, <laughs> yeah. I think he flop. <laughs> With that run out, he probably did. Seems like we're just going to refresh the table real quick, guys. Uh, oh no, actually, we're having a break. Wow, did that hour already go by? It seems like the answer is yeah. yes. Well, that was a pretty adventurous first hour. Nano's going to head into the break. Guys, I'm going to take a little break as well because we've been chatting for a little while. We had the pre-show, of course. If you guys are enjoying the action, make sure to follow this channel on Twitch. Following is free, and they're doing a lot of giveaways, as you guys have seen. Hopefully, you guys are enjoying this final table so far. We're down to six, and Runef has got the majority of the chips in play. But we've seen crazier things happen at these final tables. So stay tuned, we'll be right back, and don't go anywhere.
All right, guys, welcome back to the GG Poker official channel here on Twitch, where we've got one minute before we continue with our coverage of the 11th edition already of the High Roller Super Millions and $10,000 buy-in event, 2 million guaranteed. And this week we had a record amount of entries, 267, as you guys can see at the bottom. Runev is our dominant chip leader, and he's obviously looking to take it all. But we've seen some magical comebacks at these final tables, so nothing is set in stone. Of course, it's not the only thing that's happening over at GG Poker. The World Series of Poker are still going on. A lot of bracelets are still up for grabs. We've got a couple of uh, sick tournaments still to come, including one of these High Roller Super Millions, which I believe is Event 83. The main event has been going on. Many people have already tried their luck. Day 1s, Day 2s. We still have a couple of additional flights to go. I think that Daniel on the ground is going to try his luck one more time, because so far in the previous two days, it didn't really work out. Nano is back. It's good to have you back, Nano Noko. And so far, TikTok came in as eight in chips at this final table. Was almost out. Could have shoved the King Seven. Didn't do it. Played it safe. And he's like, you know what? I'll just cherish the nine hundred thousand chips I have left. Went a little crazy with the six five suited. Picked up a couple of blinds. Next hand, he doubled up with the Ace King suited. And all of a sudden. He is second in chips with 5 million chips. That's quite a turnaround for him. Yeah, he's thinking, look, I was just trying to get like 62K, maybe 83K. <laughs> but now he's like, oh, maybe I can get 367K minimum for second place. Uh, and we'll see if his game opens up, but still going to play solid, I think. Yep, All of these guys have already, of course, at least won $112,000. You guys can see the pay jumps are just getting bigger and bigger. Next up is 150, and after that, we're going above 200,000. Insane. We have three players that satellited their way into this event, two of them from a $100 satellite, Uber Salta and Bluff Me Not, and then TikTok from a $1,000 satellite. So we've got some pretty magical stories here regardless. Let's continue as Ape Styles has made top pair here with his Queen 8 offset. You can see Ape Styles, he's not, a, he's not scared even of a short stack, a medium stack, and all sorts of things. So he defends the Queen 8 and probably was looking for a check raise all in on that flop. Turn cards to Jack. And um, when you see your opponent check back this flop, usually you're thinking he, he's got some kind of check back type of hand, like ace highs, uh, maybe a seven, maybe a deuce. So I think Ape Styles should be betting, trying to get value, protect his hand a bit, stuff like that. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, especially because what's in the middle is so valuable to him. Those 600,000 chips that just be absolutely amazing to pick up when you're only working with 1.5. So I'm loving this bet, and he should be able to take it down. Unless Runev decides to get very adventurous with his gut shot here, but nah, he's not going to do it. Well done by Epstiles. And these chips were much needed. Look how close it is at the bottom side of the table, right? 2 million, <laughs> 1.5, 1.6. These guys are all very, very close to each other. It's funny because usually when we talk about it's closest, you would usually talk about the top two stacks, right? But now I was like, yeah, yeah we'll look at the bottom stack, see who can get out the sixth, the fifth place, the fourth place. Um, but right now, Ruin F's strategy is raise a lot, throw in some C bets here and there, and try and see if he can grind to the end. Uh, because if he doesn't have to make any big clashes, this is what the dream scenario, you know, when you got a big stack like this. Um, because people are going to play pretty solid against you ubers you know he's folding the eight he's been folding pretty tight against ruinf and then making plays at everyone else because ruinf has got more chips in him yep. and queen 10 suited is one of these hands that does look pretty especially if everybody folds it towards you you're like well time to open it up especially as ship leader bluff me not has made a couple of crazy plays pre-flop um let's not forget at the beginning of this final table couple of times he just shoved like 35, 40 bigs with like A4, A6, A7. And eventually he got caught when TikTok had the Ace King suited in the big blind. Yeah, I don't blame him for shoving the King 10 off. So I think it was a, definitely a reasonable play. Just, you know, when you make shoves though, sometimes they wake up with a hand. And there's nothing you can do about it because it's, poker is not that easy where you just shove, you automatically get the chips in return. No, sometimes they call you and you just lose. <laughs> I think uh, something that a lot of us hyper turbo players are very familiar with, where you're like, okay, shove, 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 and eventually like, oh my god, how does he have aces there? And it's like, well, <laughs> to be fair, we did shove like 17 times in the last five orbits, so <laughs> eventually somebody's going to have aces. 
exactly. Uh, right. Two nines, uh, easy shove for him. Uh, Ron F, king queen, sucks, but I don't think he's gonna call. Just seems like it'd be a little bit too much of king queen in this spot. I want to call 1.5 million more. I mean, even if he's wrong, it'd be a 10-4. Yeah, I actually think I he's going to make the call. I think he's going to make the call. Well, he's thinking about it. I'm, just, I'm also thinking on the flip side. Look, you double him up, it kind of sucks, but does it really matter if I give this guy two big blinds? Maybe I can just keep raising every hand. Not that detrimental. I, I think... Mm -hmm. I think it's fine. I think if he was in a later position, he would call. But from under the gun, that makes uh, Larinus's shove like range tighter. Um, so I think it's fine. I, I'd ra like. I'm just thinking. I'd rather just cruise and just raise and try to try to get to the end with less, yeah. the least amount of variance possible. Often, nothing good comes out of rushing things in tournaments, right? Where you're like, ideally, you just want to knock everybody out and just take it down. You're like, I'm the chip leader. Call, call, call. Let's get this over with. But that's obviously a way to really punt away your stack as well. So but I mean, it like, indeed made a lot of sense. People have different strategies, you know, and they're all good players. Like Adamo, <laughs> he probably snap called that King Queen off soon, but like, yep, yeah, <laughs> uh, let's go. Let's just ship this tournament. And that's just how he plays. But, you know, he plays off his image. All these guys play off their image and they have different styles. You've been saying it, you know, like every, everyone plays different, but they're all really good players. And it's what's so fun to see because they take different approaches at final tables and they could both be a big, big stack and they can both be a small stack and play very differently. I like this bet by TikTok. It's very tiny. If you're wrong, it doesn't hurt. But now you're betting 240,000 chips to take down a pot of 800,000 chips. And that obviously means quite a bit to him as he is now extending his lead to the rest of the table when it comes to being in second. Jonathan Van Vliet, Ape Styles, got the ace jack here. And this time, especially against Rune F, who's been opening so wide and so much, this has got to be a reshuffle. There's like no yeah. other way to play this. Then, you know, you put it in Van Fleet's hand, there's no way he's not he's going to play it any other way. It's got, it's got to be scary when you see Ruinef, though, use some emotes, because you don't know if he's doing emoji call, emoji fold, you, you never know. <laughs> I like how we came down to analyzing the emote game of Ruinef tonight. <laughs> like, that's kind of where we're at right now, guys, at the High Roller Super Millions, because we're watching a bunch of guys that I feel like are all trying to ladder, and then we're watching one man trying to end this tournament. <laughs> yeah. and he's like that's enough of the tree betting whenever i race put some respect on my name i'm the chip leader and he just ships it all of it queen jack suited all right adventurous you know what i like it he's like i'm done being tree betted yeah he's just like fuck it just gonna just shove it yeah. man please <laughs> probably gonna just shove his two eights uh yeah right now it's been this final tail has been very different. There hasn't yep. been that much post-flop play. It's actually been more straightforward, kind of what you would expect a final table to play like um, for more, uh, you know, like good players. And just kind of what I expect when you see three satellite guys in here, yep. right? Like uh, they, they're not playing tight, but, you know, they, they are also at the same uh -oh. time. But anyways, Van Fleet and TikTok going to battle it out. Yep. It's all been TikTok lately. I'm feeling bad for Van Fleet right now because uh, TikTok just just hasn't been losing all ins. Yeah, but TikTok might actually just call here with the tens. I know that's not the stand. No, that's not I don't the stand think so. to play Neto. I think he's gonna just call with tens. I don't think so because TikTok, while he's playing tighter, is not he's not a, an uber knit. You know, he like he saw him open the king seven suited tens has just too much. It's just too good. He has to know it's too good not to reshove here because Van Fleet's going to open weaker hands that are just going to fold like king-queen offsuit. And there's okay. the shove. You're right. It does go all in pre-flop. Tens against ace-king, a traditional flip here. And that is a pretty damn decent flop for ape styles. Makes a king, had the back to a spades as well. Now he just needs to avoid a 10 on the river. That could be a 10. No, it's not. Not enough pips. Uh, damn it. You know you what it is? four Nano? pips on the side. Four pips on the side. Know, all right? I know. You know what it is? I use the four-color deck, okay? I'm very good in spotting how the numbers look or if it's a queen or a king or an ace. I'm very good at the four-color deck, but the pips is not my thing. I, I don't use the pips. <laughs> you get, it's, you, once you learn, though, it's fun. You should go play some more. Do some more of that squeezing. It, it'll be good for you. Um, but well, TikTok... I mean, I, Oh, I squeeze oh. all the time, and I use it all the time, and I'm always doing the prediction game. I just use a different deck. I use a different <laughs> deck, Nano. Forgive me. 
TikTok's a short stack player. He couldn't hold on to those chips for too long. I mean, he's better at a short stack. That's why he had to lose out those pocket pens. But Van Fleet, you said he's been quiet, and he has been quiet. And now he's got 5.6 million chips. Mm -hmm. Clear second place. I think now we might get some post up play. I really like uh, watching Jonathan Van Fleet ape styles play because uh, he, he's just very aggressive. He likes to take a post flop. <laughs> uh, it's just, it's just, this is what we needed to kind of spice up this final table, a, a double up from him. I love, love me not. It's going to go all in with the fours here. You want to go? I don't believe it. What did he have? 6 3 offsuit? <laughs> like, <laughs> what a liar. But I do love it. Uber Salta giving us some emojis as well. And this final table has indeed just been very different. I mean, we don't have the, the poker sickles that we often talk about. No Ben CB this time at the final table or an Isaac Haxton or a European who's made it a couple of times. It's like, no, these are all relatively new faces besides Runef and Jonathan Van Fleet, of course. But we know we still got all three satellite winners are still in the tournament right now. Mm -hmm. So they, they, they make, they making that bank right now. <laughs> And uh, but yeah, we like you said, you know, we got the good crushers that aren't the super sickles we usually hear from, but they're still really good, like Larinus, Rune F, and Van Fleet. You know, we're gonna see them back and like hit these final Ooh. tables a lot. Uh oh, well, Larinus could be in some trouble here. Two ace. The jacks. funny thing is that both of them have ace jack suited, both Rune F and Bluff Me Not have ace jack suited. And don't forget that Bluff Me Not just picked up the blinds two rounds in a row. And he probably looks at these like, hey, I'm doing the TikTok. Like, I'm picking up lines in a row. Now I'm going to get the double off with the ace jack suited. This hand can get really feisty. Well, if Ruin F doesn't call this one, bluff me not. It doesn't strike me as a guy who's going to fold. Ruin F does make oh, a big fold of ace jack. Uh, but bluff me not. I think he's he's got to go for it. There Come we go. That. He's going to get the good news that he is ahead. But one of the jacks has been folded, though. Uh, but so far, he's still good. A 10 would wrap it up immediately. That is a great turn card. Now there's only two outs for our Croatian player. And that queen on the river is safe. Bluff me not. Suddenly, he's back. 3.7 million. And now Levinskas is in all sorts of trouble. As he's down to two and a half big blinds. Yeah, uh, he's in big trouble. And uh, satellite winners, you can't get rid of them. Those guys are not going away. I mean, to win a satellite, you got to stay in the tournament. And that's how they're doing it right now in this tournament. Just just stay in there. That's, that's all you got to do. Well, obviously, with 8-9, you can't fold here when you've got two and a half bigs. I mean, it doesn't really get much better than that. Even just paying antis in the, the small blind next round would absolutely cripple you if you're not crippled yet. So this is going to go all in one way or the other. And to be honest, 8-9 against King Jack. Why he just calls? <laughs> and he's like, well, I've got 22,000 chips left. <laughs> Maybe he <laughs> uses the auto fold, like fold to any bet button. But no, <laughs> that's not happening. We need an eight or a nine, or we are down to five. That's oh, a nine. we are not. Down to six again. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was counting pips. I was like, that's an eight or a nine for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's really good. Really good. You get your improving. <laughs> Ace nine, and we've got King Jack suited on the button. And Bluff Me Not has been playing some wild hands. Uber Celta is going to fold the Ace nine, and I don't mind that. I like to see him just ship this in. King Jack suited, I think it's fine. His opponents are even shorter than before when he shoved the King ten. They're just going to have to fold. Hopefully, he doesn't second guess himself because of what happened in the King ten offsuit before. But I like to shove. Yeah, Bluff Me Not's playing pretty good actually. I I, I think he's. Of the three satellite guys, I'm liking his game the most. It's been wild, but I mean, I thought the, the, the early, the start of the final table was a little too wild for me. Like there are a couple <laughs> of moments where he went a little nuts with the ace four and the ace six. Like he could have, the raising would have accomplished the same thing as him shipping in like 36 big blinds pre flop. So I thought that was a, maybe a little over the top, but in the last hour, it's been solid. Queen 10. <laughs> Rune F with the do seven dudes offsuit. He's like, oh, come on. Come on. <laughs> just, I like the Daniel ones uh, emojis because they like got some, some motion in it. It just looks really tilted. And like you've always been saying, where's the Oki emojis, right? They got to be know. coming one day. 
Yep, I would love the LP emotes. Like, I would spam those. But right now, I use the default ones because I actually think they did an amazing job with the emojis. And I know it's like cliche when I say that when we're on the GG Poker official channel, but I truly love the emotes that they made and they have. And it's really cool as well because if you sub to the Twitch channel, you get those emotes that you can actually spam at the poker tables on Twitch. And a couple of my viewers, because, you know, they know that I obviously have been playing quite a bit on my own stream and been commentating this event. They're now spamming the uh, GG poker emojis in my chat, which is kind of funny. <laughs> well, it's kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of funny because normally like, you know, as a streamer, you're probably thinking, man, it's kind of hard to figure out what emojis are, or what emotes to make, right? Uh, how to get a good one. But like GG, when they got like the perfect ones, like it's almost like their emojis were meant to be on Twitch. Like they just, yeah. uh, they're, they're like the, uh, the, the not sure if, right? Kind of looks like the feels bad man, you know, and stuff like that. <laughs> We've got fives. Ooh, oh, no. TikTok. Well, that is... No, what? no, no. Wasn't no. TikTok in second place earlier? He's yeah, but he lost... Tournament. Yep, he lost the big one. Second place. Oh, my goodness. He was the shortest stack. Went into the rake, second in chips, and now his tournament life is on the line with pocket fives against the pocket tens of Bluff Me Not. The flop is safe for Bluff Me Not. The turn is safe. Just needs to avoid a five on the river. Is it paint? Uh, it's not paint, but there are no pips. So that means that TikTok is out. Well, that was quite the roller coaster, right? <laughs> he will walk away with $112,000. Not bad for investing $1,000 into a satellite. $111,000 profit. That's awesome. But we were in the break 18 minutes ago, Nano, and he was second in chips. Yeah, he, he's got to be pretty pretty tilted actually i know he's probably thinking look if i was gonna go out in six why didn't you just bust me when i had like seven big blinds or eight big blinds know. you know he actually had he probably after the break was feeling really good was like oh man i might get like 273k plus a minimum right top three and now he's thinking how the yeah. hell am i out and it's funny how poker works right because if you in the beginning of the tournament he was very short and if you would have told mm -hmm. him like hey you're gonna get top six he'd be like okay i'll take it when he had five hundred thousand chips left he'd be like well i am going to be sixth then all of a sudden you're second and now being sixth just sucks. Like you're absolutely upset about it. You're like, oh, come on. How did this go the way it went? Oh, this Ruin S going to knock out Lorenus possibly. Come on. Oh, he does not. The emoji. <laughs> Good, Good game, game before he even calls. Queens against Ace 3. Levinskas needs an ace. Mm, well, that's not it. But now he's got deuces. Oh, oh! And he gets the deuce. But can the board pair on the river or not? We need a queen, four, five, or a deuce. Oh, and it's God. another deuce. Can you believe it, Nano? What a run out. Don't Rune do F. that to Lorenus. I mean, just, uh, uh, uh. just you know, just blank out on the turn in river. Don't do that. That's dirty. <laughs> roller coasters tonight, mate. It's the night of the roller coaster. TikTok was on a roller coaster. And now Levinskas was on a little roller coaster as well. He'll walk away with uh, $151,000. And all of a sudden, Nano, we're down to four. Yeah, I, like, I didn't have the, you know enough time to talk about the goodbye to goodbye to the last guy, sixth place, uh, TikTok. You know, like it's so quick, like bam, bam, someone's gonna bust out soon again. Who knows? Uber is gonna shove this ace nine on. Regardless, for those two guys, it's a good is spot, it? right? 150k. Do you think he'll shove the ace nine here? Yep, yep he I will. think so. I'd shove well, that's sure. uh, the correct play. Obviously, after knowing the whole cards, I'd be a little nervous. I mean, I know that Rune F, is he going to call? No, he's not going to call. He makes it seem like he calls with his emoji game, but he's not going to call that. <laughs> yeah, he's very tricky. Um, yeah, uh, the ace me. nine, you do want to be shoving because uh, it's a very good hand against a chip leader who's opening a lot. Plus, you know, you got a lot of fold equity, of course, but the other two guys, right, in the tournament, they, they got a lot of chips. They're going nowhere. So at that point, you got to look for spots yeah. to chip up. Otherwise, you're going to bleed down to 10 big blinds and it could be a lot worse situation. I like it. I just find it also, it displays a lot of courage. That's what I meant. Like, I, I don't think that's an easy shove for somebody like Uber Celta who did satellite into this final table. This is, I mean, if you're playing $100 satellites, is it safe to say that this is without a doubt the biggest spot of his poker career? It probably yeah. is. Uh I'm pretty 100%. sure this is the biggest score, 100%. It's 203K yeah. minimum for him and it can only get bigger. Yep. Two, so then shoving ace nine, I still, yeah, that shows courage. And uh, yeah, I like no. it. And he's going to shove the eights as well here against the ace 10 suited of ape styles. I agree Ooh. though with you. Like, you know, like it does take some courage, but eights feels a lot better, right? Like, oh, if I'm 
up against Ace King on flipping, but I don't think I don't know if Ace Ten suit is just like it's tough. It's nineteen big blinds though. There's a lot in the middle. <laughs> Ship it. <laughs> Runev is entertaining us with his emotes tonight. Come on, Runev, get that snap cam set up. You're gonna make another final table anyway. <laughs> Jonathan's really thinking about this one, but does decide to make the fold in the end. Down to four. And Rune F is still just looking around. He's like, is anybody closing in on me? Not really. Even though Bluff Me Not is back to six million. Ubisoft, I could ship it again here. Yeah, he, he you know, he, he just keeps reshipping and picking up a couple of big lines, and that's what you want to do. Easy uh, grinding up. So there's the practical reship. Rune F's gonna maybe use every emoji one time by the end of this tournament. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he's playing emoji bingo, who knows? <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, I just need the wild one. Yeah. He's like, I just need running hot. It's like, oh, I think you've been running hot, man. <laughs> <laughs> and Ubisol is all of a sudden, he's like, well, 4.1, that's not that bad because. <laughs> I was pretty close to going out already in fourth place. Look at Jonathan so, Van Vliet. Your read here, Bluff Me Not just going to ship the sixes, right? Like he's just based on how I mean, Bluff he's Me Not's been wild. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I like it. He's keeping the game simple for himself. He's like, well, if he's got it, he's got it. If he's trapping me, he's trapping me. But I'm not going to play sixes pulse flop against Ape Styles. And I do like that. Yep. And this spot, bluff me not. I don't think he's going to shove this time because he's got so many chips. Uh, so, question is, Just how call? many big blinds does he lose? I like that. Limp call. Yeah. Definitely right the right play. Because you don't want to raise a hand like this and get re-raised, uh, especially against a chip leader. Like, And you're expecting to get raised a lot, Queen Jack, here. So, it does make sense from the limp call. It doesn't cost you that much. Let's flop the piece, though. Not really the flop that Bluff Me Not was hoping for. Does pick up a gut shot, of course. The 10 is the dream card on the turn. I think he's going to at least for see this price? turn card. Yeah. yeah, for that price, you may as well. Because obviously a 10 would give him the stone cold nuts on this board. Well, you might think improves. the jack is good. You might think it's good, isn't it? To be fair, it probably would be good a lot of time. But, you know, chip leaders, they pick up hands. I have the feeling that Rune is not going to make it very cheap this time, though. It's going to be like 1.1, 1.2. Yeah. Spot on. <laughs> yeah, you got to charge those 8 9s, those 10 9s, Jack 10s, all those types of hands. And now it sucks for Queen Jack because you're like, oh, I improved my hand. I could have the best hand, but I could be behind. These chips I are think important. you got a call. I think you got a call. I mean, Oh, and the he queen. gets there on the river, and that's why you got to call, obviously, since his hand is improved. Like, obviously, if the turn is a deuce or a three or a four, you just fall there. But after you make a jack, there, yeah, you, you can't get away from it. <laughs> He's going to check that's it down, so. yep. <laughs> he knows. Rune F could feel it. He's like, I'm beat here. This was not the run that I was hoping for, and what a pot going into the hair, uh, or going to the way of Bluff Me Not. 8.3 million, Nano. He's back. Someone now, Ronef's got to be like, okay, someone actually is in reach to catching up to me now. Yeah. Ruin's going to open again, but the Queen Jacks are just getting him. Yeah, <laughs> everybody's just out flopping our boy Ronef at this point. Uh, I mean, he does pick up the back door, straight draw and flush draw. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> Deja vu. <It> just, <laughs> Queen Jack, two pair, every <laughs> single hand. Can Ruin F put in zero more chips in his pot? That'd be the way to win in this one for him. I mean, normally you want to bet because you're like, I'm the chip leader. I'm going to put some pressure on these guys, but this is not the board. And Ruin F knows it. Doesn't have the hand for it. Ubiselta probably felt very good already on the flop. Will feel a lot better on the turn. Doesn't get much better than this. I wonder what he's betting. 450? Ah, I like the smaller bet. It just seems like Ruin F, if he had a jack, would have bet the flop. If he had a queen, he would have bet 
turn by now. He hasn't he hasn't bet any street. He looks like he's got ace high or he's got six seven pocket eights. You got to bet small to get these hands to call. This is actually a really good bet sizing choice, despite how strong his hand is. He gets called by ace high. Wow. He, yeah, he gets called. Well, Ubisoft is going to be pretty pleased to see that. It's probably going to bet a little bit bigger on the river. That's a, I feel like that's a frustration call by Rune F. It's just that he hasn't been winning pots lately. Whenever he opens up, people three bet him or they go all in on him. And whenever he gets in it with a proper hand, they somehow outflop or outriver him. Because that call on the turn there is like, yeah, it's a little yeah, questionable. I, yeah, I definitely agree it's a little bit questionable because I think if he really thinks about it, he might think, look, if Uber Celta had a flush draw, probably would have bet the flop. If he had a straight draw, he, he probably would have bet the flop too, right? Like 7-8 type hand, 7-9. And he might have bet chose a bigger bet size of a draw. Uh, Unless, so. no, no. He's got something very special planned for us on the river. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> he's, he's not that crazy. He's not that kind of guy. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that was a little bit of a frustration call. Because sometimes you're thinking, I've been losing pots. So you start seeing hands that yeah. you beat that you that aren't actually there. Because I, I think the hands that he thought he beat would have took a different line, whether it's bet the flop or bet bigger on the turn. Oh, you see the, the turn cards of your dream, right? It's like, what if it's like the three and then the river is a deuce? <laughs> it's like, maybe I can win this spot. Is there a way to win this spot? You've got uh, two very similar hands going up against each other here. The nine, six against the 69. <laughs> That's okay. a funny flop as well. I like how they have each other's suited uh, suits as well. Yeah, it's like flip-flop too, the, the way it was dealt to them. Yep. Um yeah, it uh, looks like uh, they're going to just chop this one up. I don't really see how anyone's going to mm -hmm. lose this pot. Well, you never know what happens on the turn of the river. There's a lot of scary cards that could scare someone away. Four of hearts, maybe not the scariest card out there. <laughs> yeah, um, usually though with these hands, they, the two guys are thinking, look, protect my hand, get a little bit of value, but let's not put in three streets of value. Uber, Celta... Could easily bet here again. Could easily check call. Yeah, I think it's fine. This is Ape Styles, though. You think Ape Styles is going to check, check all the way to the river, chop it up? I have the feeling that he's going to try to just take this down. Well, I think Ape Styles definitely will bet this turn card. Um, he should. It's just you don't want to let those seven X's, those five X's, deuce X's, the two over cards mm -hmm. get free, free river cards. So there's the bet. And uh, yeah, I think we're going to chop this one up. Uh, Unless uh, a five rolls off and someone wants to like just try to go for it. Okay. <laughs> oh. I did, I did hit yeah. every single six to nine. That is funny. Well, now at this point, I am obviously with you. Salta is <laughs> going to check, and Jonathan is probably going to go very big here, right? I can easily see him go for a big sizing, um, unless he puts his opponent on ace high specifically, but. Oh, well, yeah, maybe maybe he doesn't go two. I don't know, two thirds. I'm, I'm I think not sure. I can really see go. He could go. He can go over bed. He could, but you know, two thirds roughly. Hey, what? That's not two thirds at all. <laughs> Come it's on, that's all. <laughs> oh, seventy-five percent. Seventy-five percent. Close enough. I, it's even more than seventy-five percent, mate. Like one point two million in a one point four million pot. That's not seventy-five percent at all. <laughs> uh, math, math's off a little bit today. <laughs> <laughs> He's like betting 90% pot, and you're like, ah, two thirds, yeah, that's pretty. <laughs> uh, we, we have our days. I'm like, yeah. oh, you know, he, he's going to min raise here. It's like, oh, yeah, that's like an all in play. This is all in right now, right? <laughs> yeah. But you were right all along. It was indeed going to go chop chop. So uh, I'll give you kudos for that one. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. King, queen, a6, offsuit in the small blind. You could get some action here. No, oh, A6, snap fault. Yeah, seems fine. You know, you don't got to play every single hand in every single spot. And it's out of position. Rune F, Jack 3. Okay, let's, we got a little bit of slow game right now, it seems. Yep. I mean, it's very frustrating, I think, for Rune F because he's just not been getting any hands for the longest time. And whenever he tried to involve himself in pots. But it's so funny how poker works. Because at this point, Rune F is probably feeling like, man, I can't win a hand. But then again, everyone is looking at the chip stack that Rune F has, and it's like, I would love that 9.1 million. It's really funny how that poker dynamic works, I think. 
Mm-hmm. And rude enough, Uh-oh. I think he did get a little bit lucky in some spots. And bluff me not, just gonna give Van Fleet some more chips here. And I like the play. Van Fleet probably will have to fold a lot to this three bet. And King Six suited is a good hand to do it with because you got the King <laughs> blocker, so you block like the good hands like Ace King, King Queens, and plus uh, with the Six, you you don't the Six is a good card in the sense that you don't block his folding range. Uh, so when Van Fleet opens like the nine, no, 10 nines and stuff like that, you don't block those hands that will just raise fold. So that's why it's uh, the King six suit is a reasonable hand to do it with. No, I like it as well. Just the wrong moment. <laughs> Unfortunately, Jonathan did have pocket tens and that was an easy reshuffle for him. This is, uh, the pacing of this final table is very funny. It's like every single time you think like it's going to slow down. Then something crazy happens. Bam, bam. Like TikTok go- <laughs> yeah, TikTok goes from six to second to sixth, and he's out. And uh, we we had the same bluff me not goes from like second to last all the way back to second. It's it's definitely been a very different night than some of the other nights we've seen. I mean, could have I, some I say it's more fireworks chill. here. It's more yeah. chill, right? It's more relaxing. It's a more emoji day. But, you know, it's <laughs> still a lot of money for first place, though. It's, it's, it's insane. Five hundred thousand, yeah. It's the biggest field we've had so far. 267 entries this week. As we have Uber Celta, one of the people that satellited into this final table from a $100 satellite into a $1,000 satellite into the main event. And he ran it all the way here to the final table. Now it's top Buff four. Oh my goodness. Oh. He's well. aggressive. Ace queen. Snap it in. Come on, Uber. You can't fold this hand. This no, is just too fold. good. See, bluff me not. Is oh, ship it. He was looking yeah, for the emoji. Oh That's what he was doing. <laughs> A seven suited. Can we avoid the diamonds? Yes, we can. A king would chop it up, though. A king or an eight? Oh my goodness, an eight would be disgusting. That is an eight. Wow. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, that is very, very unfortunate for Uber Salta. <laughs> Oh, everyone, goodness. I think everyone at the table, even us, right, just jaw drop. Like, what? What do you mean? Yeah. Mate? We've had what a couple mean? of brutal runouts tonight. <laughs> the deuce and the five, that was a fun one as well. Tilt. Uber Seltzer got punished for looking for his emo- the perfect emoji. He picked the wrong one, clearly. He should have used, like, my last hand. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, he should have used not sure if. Like, yeah. <laughs> And then obviously right after the run, you use so sick. Like that's just the perfect moment to use so sick. So so you know what I, if I was gonna say if Uber had busted, everyone would have got a 70k page. It's like they they put 70k right in front of them, right? And it just yeah. flew away, you know? Like they're like, you can't you didn't grab me fast enough. Well, we've got ace queen suited again for Uber Celta. I think last time was ace queen offsuit, to be fair, but ace queen suited. This time he's the one who could do the reshuffle, and he is going to. And bluff me not is not going to make the call, of course, with Ace Two offsuit. And Rune F is like, "Geez, Louise, give me something I can open." <laughs> okay. Uh oh. Uh oh. But I don't. I don't see how bluff me is bluff me not really going to call off two sevens here. It's pretty crazy. Uber though, King Ten, he might make spice it up a little bit. You know, he might call, he might raise. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. That's why I said, uh-oh, because I feel like all three hands here could get a little adventure. He's just going to make the call. Now, Apestar is looking at his nines. He's like, well, I can just pick up 900,000 ships. That seems like a pretty good deal to me. Or I, I'm shipping it in. There we yeah. go. Two sevens. I mean, bluff me not. It's going to be a tough call to make, but we've seen, yeah, I was going to say, we've seen him get a little wild pre flop but generally he likes to be the shover rather than the guy who calls it off. Which is definitely what you should be. <laughs> mm, yeah. Nobody wants to be the guy that always calls it off because <laughs> that's not the, that's not a way that you make a whole lot of final tables. So the nights are going to or, or you get to the final points. table with, with all the chips, right? You just call everything. You just run hot. Oh oh, Rune finally has a playable hand. He picks up the pocket sevens. He's like, yes, I can race. And then we've got aces in the big blind for bluff me not. Oh man, Rune F is running uh, pretty rough right now. Yeah, but he should be able to get away from this, right? But 
to see does bluff me not three bet this hand i mean he probably will because he three bet earlier and folded the king six suited so he feels like oh people know i three bet bluff so uh, he's probably not going to slow play here but one seven is dead keep that in mind million extra for rune f this would be the wrong moment rune f to make a crazy play I know you've been a little inactive lately. You gotta let it go, but this gotta feel so frustrating. No, don't no, oh, he no. doesn't know. <gasps> oh my goodness, that's the wrong moment, Rune F. He needs a magical seven, or he just lost eight million ships. <laughs> now six million, but still. Oh, can we get a seven on the river? No, we cannot. So bluff me not is our new chip leader. 12.8 million ships heading his way. Oh no, no. No, no, what do you no, think? No. Was that frustration shove with the two sevens? It's just like, yeah, well, I, what do you I honestly think? think I don't think I, he's tilted. I just think it's been frustrating because he hasn't been getting a hand for like 45 minutes. And at this point, he's like, I finally got a hand. They're three betting me again. He's like, I've had enough. I'm the one making a play this time. I, I, that's what's I not think it's a bit of a frustration. Of yeah, I think it was a bit yeah. of a frustration. It was just like, man, I got to stand up to you guys eventually, right? And, yeah. uh, I think looking back, he's gonna, he's gonna regret that one. I mean, like ninety nine percent of the time, that's a pretty sick move, right? Because like, how do you call that with ace ten or ace jack? Like, you you don't make those calls six point eight million there. Like, especially when you're bigger than the other two guys that are left at the table. It's just yeah. <laughs> when you've got aces, you're like, all right, mate. <laughs> what a moment to make a play. Oh man, I feel terrible for Rune. Yeah, but I mean, bluff me not. You know, when you, he's been shoving a lot, he's got a bad i would say he's got a bad image relative to the other guys so he it paid off right when you get the two ace do you play like crazy you're gonna get actually hey look at this van fleet raised the button he min bet the flop and he's betting again with just nothing but he ruined f on exactly six x type hands that won't call a turn bet and oh. he gets it done that's some sick hand reading because think about this he's like ruin f if you had an ace you would just reshove on me pre-flop with that stack size all of a sudden, Rune F, our chip leader at the break, is now by far and away the shortest stack. And he only has 10 big blinds to work with. Unbelievable. What a turn of events. Man, I'm like, I don't even know how to feel now. No. Like, I've just been a roller, coaster, a roller coaster of emotions for me as well, just watching this. And I just think it like, this is Rune F's day. He came the chip leader, yeah. crushing it, right? He has two final, this is his third back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back final table. He got a seventh place in a fourth place he was looking like he was going to get a first place but right now he, he might be tying that fourth place uh if, unless he can pick up some lucky cards soon and yeah, maybe it will turn around for him now that he's the shortest stack uber Celta making the call here with the ace five does of course have a gut shot but ape styles is sitting on an absolute monster with the set of threes oh, save man. card for ape styles yeah i know you're feeling for ruin f but you know what a this, punt. This, there's three other guys here, dude. They, you know, we got two satellite winners. We got Ape Styles. And Ruin F's still in. He might catch up, but who knows? Yep. Van Fleet, going to bet some more. He's got the image to get some value, but doesn't get called by the Ace 5. Just hoping his opponent had a pair. Uh, you really have to stay patient, uh, patient in these tournaments. And obviously, Ruin F is a very patient guy. Otherwise, you don't make back to back to back final tables. But. I really did feel that in the last 45 minutes, we saw that even he is still a human being. And, you know, he'll start forcing it and pushing it a little bit as well. when perhaps he really didn't have to. Oh, well, everyone well. else is like, thank you for the chips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everybody's been chipping up other than Renef. We've got Bluff Me Not here leading, uh, or at least betting, with the king high. Gets called by the deuces of Ape Styles. Ape Styles has been playing a really solid final table, hasn't he? Yeah, and you know, he still gets involved in a lot of pots. That's what I'm saying. He's very he plays a bit differently than some of the other regs, but he's one of he's one of the best in the game. And you know, sometimes you gotta play a little bit out of the box to kind of throw you guys off guard. And you know, he'll make these loose defense of ten deuce, and it's good right now. Can Bluff Me not fire one more time at the river or not? Must be uh one hell of a moment to do so. He's like, it'd, be a, I... it'd be a nice play, but uh, he's just thinking, man, what can I represent? Would I have bet an ace on the turn? Would I really bet a jack on the river? But maybe I should just go for it. Does bet half pot. Can Van Fleet. I like uh, it. Yeah, really well done. 
I mean, yep. you really think about it, it's hard to think of what bluffs, like what value he has. But then again, you're thinking Van Fleet from his point was thinking like, what do I beat? Like, yeah, what well, exactly? <laughs> You've got deuces with a ten kicker. It's like, even if I think he's weak and he's semi bluffing, his semi bluff probably still beats me. So <laughs> there's not much you can do there. Bluff me not right now with the ace queen offsuit in the big blind. It's going to put the pressure on Jonathan Van Fleet. Makes the call with the queen queen three suited. I mean, okay. Van Fleet's just happy to play just some as many post slot spots as possible. I think he thinks that he's got a big post slot edge uh, because you know everyone's pre flop game is so strong these days. Like you can't really get too much out of other guys. So you you win chips from post flop, but yeah, you're gonna play some weaker hands sometimes here and there out of position and stuff. But uh, it's okay as long as you got an edge. This could be it. If Bluff Me Not decides to raise here, I'm pretty damn sure that Rune F is going to go all in with his Queen 10 offsuit. I think that's a call, right? It definitely is a call from uh, Nash Equilibrium. I'm not sure what Rune F knows. Yeah, it looks like he is going to make that call. There we go. Doing good. All right. Yep, he's in perfect shape. He just needs to avoid the sevens. Oh, the my goodness. Seven. Oh, my goodness. We need no a queen on the queen. river, or it's, it's all over coming. for the man who made back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back final tables, and it is all over. We are down to three. Rune F will walk away with $200,000, but chip leader at the break, Nano. What just happened? Um, That was a bad performance. I know you don't like me to say a bad or unfortunate, but that... No, you said terrible that's, performance. That's before. terrible performance, you know? He <laughs> came in as a chip leader... He looked like he was going to win the tournament. He gets fourth again. How did he get fourth? I don't know. He kind of blew up a little bit at those last 45 minutes, like you said. Uh, you know, he's, I know he's a really good player. He's a way better player than me and all, a lot of guys out there, you know. But sometimes you, 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 things just don't go your way. You get feel a little steamy. You push a little bit of edges. I think those pocket sevens was a little bit too forceful, especially for the amount of big blinds he was up against. Very yeah. unnecessary. Um, it it sucks for him. It happens. It sucks that it's a big final table, though, right? Like, it's half a million for first, but you got to bounce back. Uh, we might see him, though, back to back to back to back final tables. That'd so. be insane. It'd be insane. But I would love to see him just do a little bit better because that was very unfortunate. Yep. It's just, uh, I'm sure that he's sitting there as well. It's like, what just happened, actually? Like, I'm pretty sure that 45 minutes ago, I was the dominant chip leader of this final table. Nobody was even remotely close to me in chips. And all of a sudden, he is out in fourth place. Well, that means we're down to three. And the beautiful thing here is that we have two players that came into this final table by satelliting their way into a satellite into the main event. So the story is magnificent. And they're going pretty hard over here as well with the 10-4 offsuit and the king-8 offsuit. <laughs> no, no, what's happening in this hand? Um, it's a blind versus blind situation. They, you know, you're gonna have very wide ranges. They both know this, so that's why the ten four is calling down. The king eight's like, you know, bluffing at it. Uber's thinking, hmm, I don't really like to jack. He goes for a pot size back snap call from Bluff oh Me Not. I love this. I love the play yep. from both players. Uh, but snap call from Bluff Me Not. Wow, how do you know? Bluff well, me it's not in the play. name. Bluff yeah. me not, Nano. <laughs> He's like, don't you even dare. Now Uber Salta is obviously incredibly short. Is he going to make a play here with the queen Do's offsuit? Obviously, it's still just... His, his stack is big enough that it's hard for uh, Ape Styles to really call a whole lot. But he's like, nope, I'm not going to do it with the queen Do's. But he's down to 11 bigs. Yeah, oh, uh, oh, I oh. like the play. I like the play he made. Uh, it really sucks. But, you know, just to finish up what you were saying before, yeah, we have two satellite guys, right? Both in for $100. Uh, the Bluff Me Not, he satellite for a $100 tournament into a $1,000 satellite into this 10K. He also did this for the 25k PPC before, so he's just really good. But he's a mid-stakes player. But Uber Salta is more of a noob than him. This guy barely even plays. $100 satellite, got into this tournament, tried to sell 90%, sold 0%. But I'm so glad no one bought his action because he's guaranteed 273k. And then we got the super pro, Ape Styles, Van Fleet, who super crusher. Third final table, hasn't done well. At this final table, uh, one of these final tables yet, but this is, I would say he's done well for sure. Top three is really good. Can possibly yeah. ship this tournament. And has been playing very well as well. He's going to make the call here with the Jack-10 offsuit. 
and he's going to flop top pair. So that's not all that bad. I mean, you say bluff me not as a mid-stakes player, mate. After tonight, I'm not too sure. If he walks away with $480,000, I don't think he's a mid-sex player anymore. <laughs> he's going to try his luck with the big guys. <laughs> I mean, I'm looking back at his final tail profile, and, you know, we had to put down his $210 tournament win and his $250 tournament win. Oh, not I mean win, second place in the daily special. So he doesn't have many many good results out there, but uh, no, That's he's doing insane, really well man. here. He's what a story. King. What a story. The poker dream is still alive and kicking in 2020 over at GG Poker. Because a man from Austria, or a woman, I don't know, just turned $100 at least into $278,000. And potentially a whole lot more because he's got a lot of chips. All he needs to do is win a flip or two and he's got it all, Nano. What a story. Yeah. And, you know, I know Van Fleet is out chipped a lot against Bluff Me Not right now, but he's got to love this situation. At least he's not against two, like, super pros, right? So he's got enough mm -hmm. chips to work with post-flop against these guys. I think Van Fleet is going to play as much post-flop as possible. Of course, it's possible the other guys are better than him at post-flop. I doubt it, but uh, that's definitely going to be his approach here. Um, just try to play as many hands as possible. Uber sell to... He's just like, please double me up. Please double me up. Uh, but, you know, he did bluff off the king eight there, but I think it was a really well done bluff. It's just a bit unfortunate that he got snap called by bluff me not. <laughs> Didn't even think about it. Sometimes, yeah. you know, when you feel like you might be good, don't even think about it. Just hit that call button and be like, well, <laughs> let's see where I'm actually at in this end. So down to three. Well, obviously, we've got a obvious short stack and we've got a chip leader. And then we also have the veteran, the crusher, the pro, ape style, still in the mix, in the middle of it. Eight million ships, definitely uh, enough for a comeback. But we're not down to two just yet. We've seen a couple of turnarounds at this final table. If you would have told me that Brunev was going to go out in fourth place at the break, I would have laughed at you. Nana. I would have been like, nope, no way, that's not going to happen. That's and that's the thing, right? We went to the break. We had TikTok go out, who was in second place in what? Uh, did he get <laughs> oh six? I can't remember which one he got. Yeah, six. Uh, he got six plays, and then we got Ruin F out in fourth place. Like, <laughs> it's not what I expected, but that's the thing about poker. You don't got to be the best player to ship it. You just got to get some cards here and there and play some Come solid on. poker. Uber Celta, I want to see Uber Celta sho uh, shove it here. Like, come on, you've got 1.6 million left. You know, 1.3 in the middle. Go for it. This is it. No! Oh, he just folds. Oh, he's got the open and the straight draw in position. No. I know it sucks to call off that many. I think he should have called there, though. Oh, it just seems like he could maybe hit his hand. Maybe it checks to him. He bluffs at oh, it. You no. know, he's all in King 3 against Van Fleet. Uber Celta, one of our other satellite players. He needs some help here because he's behind. He needs a King or a 3. He just needs a king at this point because there is a six, of course, in the hand of Ape Styles. Can Chop we get a king on the river? It is paint. Oh, it's a queen. no. And that means that we are heads up. Uber Celta with an absolutely amazing run. He's giving us the thank you. I love that. I mean, not bad, Nano. Not bad. $100 into $278,000. He's going to be very happy tonight. I think he's very happy. Like, uh, did he? What place did he come into this battle? He came in in fourth place. That's pretty good. Top three for a hundred dollar yep. player. I, I think he's very like most players, right? They bust, not top two. They're just they're a little disappointed. But I think this is the one guy that's like, I'm pretty happy. No, oh, that's amazing. Wow. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, these really uh, both of them, bluff me not, and Uber Celt are just absolutely amazing stories that we don't get to see super often. You hear about it, you don't see them too often, but it does mean that we're heads up. And Ape Cell is most likely going to be the slightly more aggressive one. But Bluff Me Not has already shown us he's not afraid to make crazy plays. Mostly pre-flop, actually. Post-flop, I think he's kind of been in line. But pre-flop, he can get really out of line. Well, in every spot post-flop, Bluff Me Not has called down correctly. <laughs> I haven't seen him get bluffed yet, right? Like, he called down against Larinas earlier correctly until the river hit the guy and he folded, you know, and then you saw him with the 10-4. He's going to be a tough opponent for Jonathan Van Fleet. This 2-1 to one chip lead. Bluff Me Not is in very good position, but they've got a lot of big blinds to play for. Like, Van Fleet's got 45 big blinds. That's a, enough for a pro to try to grind out his opponent. Uh, mm -hmm. But 
Bluffy Knot's not playing tight. He's not just like, oh, I'm trying to hit aces and kings, um, and you can grind him out easily. So this, this is going to be a bit of a battle. 367 for second, 493 for first in the biggest field that we've had so far in the High Roller Super Millions. Hopefully you guys at home have enjoyed the coverage tonight. We do this every Tuesday. If you like it, make sure to come back next Tuesday, 8 p.m. Central European Summertime, which is 2 p.m. on the East Coast and 11 a.m. on the West Coast. We've had some of the biggest stars in poker at these final tables. Today, we had a couple of uh, more unknown players make it. Of course, you know, we still had Darren Elias. We had Abe Sells. We had Rune F. But other than that, also a couple of new faces. But it's been a lot of fun to do this every Tuesday. And we hope to see you again next week, of course. Yeah. And um, when, when, so is the next, which one is the WSOP 10K Super Millions? Is that, so is that next week uh, or the week after? No, definitely not after next that? week. I, yeah, I believe it's in two weeks. I can double check it for you real quick, but I believe it's WSOP event number 83. I mean, that field, this is going to be insane, right? Like everyone is going to come out. We're going to have more new names actually too. Like we're going to have guys that don't normally play this tournament probably play that because that, that we're price gonna have really... <laughs> we're going to have... Aoki's already made his run at the final table, okay? We got to oh, let some on. other new faces. <laughs> no, that wasn't the run. We know that Elki can do so much better. Got a bit unfortunate, you know. He came in as a short stack. <laughs> Right. Came out as a short. <laughs> I mean, um, he onto did this hand. Once. <laughs> oh, it looks like yeah. I was going to say maybe Van Fleet was going to take a stab, but uh, nice spot. Bluff me not. I'm double checking it for you real quick. It is September 6th, so not next week, right? It is next week, right? Well, then this would be a very short month. No, I'm, there is still not. the first. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Oh okay. my God, you're so bad, Nano. What are you doing? No, September <laughs> my credibility 6th. has gone way down, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. And that's going to be a lot of fun. So they're playing right. for 130K right now. There's no deal making allowed in the 10K Super Million. So this is the biggest heads up match Bluff Me Not has ever played in his life, guaranteed. I'm sure Van Fleet has played these kind of matches before in tournaments, so he's going to feel pretty comfortable. Uh, so, but you know, the thing is, you know, when you're a guy who doesn't play such big matches, it's you're a bit more nervous and, and nerve wracking, a little bit uh, when there's more players that right because you can always ladder someone up. But when it's just one other guy behind you, you got nothing to lose. You just got to fight for it. You got to call down. You got to make the big bluffs. And, you know, it's your second or first. There's, there's nothing, there's no laddering anymore. If I was Bluff Me Not, and I'd be in a position where I have the feeling my opponent's just got way more experience and, you know, is way more chill playing for this amount of money, I'd just be super crazy pre-flop. It's be like any hand that I like, I, I just shove it in. Be like, well, I've got him covered anyway. Any two cards, as long as I'm alive, I've got a chance to knock him out. And I mean, if he that... keeps folding... We're picking that up would some be blinds. viable if, like, you had like twenty big blinds or something. But at this point, they got way too many. No, big you want to close it up. out. This is a perfect <laughs> moment to do that, Nana. Just wrap it up. <laughs> but bluff me not. So he's a he's a good player. I can see yeah. from his tendencies. He's got post flop game for sure. Uh, he's, he is betting here with a straight draw. Van Fleet's got. I wouldn't say I was going to say bottom pair, but is it really count as bottom pair? More like the under pair. Wow, it's a race. <laughs> Well, he makes a crazy play here, and he's right. Because Bluff Me Not has absolutely nothing other than a gut shot. Yeah, this is, this is a really nice play. I think Van Fleet actually thinks his opponent has like an ace-5, an ace-6, <laughs> an ace-4, something like that. Wow, that's a great really great play indeed by Ape Stiles. And we are on to another break. We're heads up, guys. It is unbelievable, but we have managed to lose both of the chip leaders we had in the previous break. TikTok was in second in chips, and he had like six million to work with. Rune F was our dominant chip leader all night long, and all of a sudden we blink twice and he's out. Obviously, they still walked away with a lot of money, but there's no way that that's what they were hoping for. We're gonna take a couple of minutes, and after that, we'll be back with the conclusion of the 11th edition of the High Rollers Super Millions played over at GG Poker. We hope you are enjoying the action. Make sure to follow this Twitch channel if you haven't done it yet. A lot of really cool poker shows are coming your way. 
almost every day actually it's been a very cool program lately so stay tuned we'll be right back with the conclusion of this high rolex super millions Alrighty guys, I'm back. Nanonoko will be back soon as well. And in 50 seconds, we will continue our heads up match between Bluff Me Not and Jonathan Van Vliet, also known as Ape Styles in the world of poker. 64 against 42 big blinds, as you guys can see on the screen. And a $100,000 difference. Well, even a little bit more than that. It's uh, it's going to be a feisty one. I, I wonder if Bluff Me Not can bring it home. It'd be a beautiful story. The $100 satellite 
or well, the hundred dollar investment potentially turning into a four hundred and ninety three thousand dollar payout doesn't get much better than that in poker. That is what every poker player dreams of, and bluff me not is very close to realizing that dream. But I think even if he would come in in second, he's still going to be on cloud nine. He's still going to be incredibly happy. But when you get this close, Nano, oh, oh, we've got two pretty decent hands going up against each other here in the first hand after the break. And Bluff Me Not's going to open up with the race. Whoa, look how quick that three bet was. Oh my goodness, didn't skip a second. I like it. It just kind of looks like you're a little bluffing a bit. And Bluff Me Not calls. Both players don't have a piece. We've got the back to a spades alive for Bluff Me Not. That's some, <laughs> I know, that's it's, something. it's like when you when you get the Queen 10, you're just thinking like, how can I win this spot in the back door <laughs> spades? You know, you're just really <laughs> reaching and that's a really small bet. Yeah. He's got the back to a straight draw, of course, as well. And nine jack run out would give him the not straight. The deuce of diamonds is an absolute brick and doesn't really help anyone. Now being in position though, if this goes check, and that could be a great moment for Bluff Me Not to take a serious stab at this spot. And there's a check. Um, but, you know, the three big blind bet got Bluff Me Not to call with really weak hand. And don't you feel a little obligated to bluff, right? When you got the queen yeah. 10, you're just thinking like, man, I know I'm up against ace high so much, uh, some king highs. Maybe I can get them to fold. But you have to bet big though, right? If you want to take this down, it has to be 3 million or something. Well, there we That's go. That's a good Two bet. Point. But the thing is... Yep. I don't think Van Fleet's folding right now. Um, Van Fleet is, he's a strong player. I, I just don't see him uh, folding. Nice call. Oh my goodness. He's going to check one more time though. Can Bluff Me Not pull the trigger for a massive pot? 11 million chips in the middle. This be a moment, mate. Imagine if he does it. Do oh, it. First such a hand after play. break. Uh, no, he checks, he gives up, and that means that no, Ape Styles is actually a chip leader in this heads up match. And that's when you, if you bluff me now, you're like, oh my goodness, I should have gone for it. I wanted to go for it. He didn't go for it, though. I'm pretty sure, wasn't the the chip stacks flip flop right before his hands? Yep. <laughs> like, no, literally, no, like, no. you know what? We had the chip stack wrong in the graphic. Let's just swap stacks real fast. Uh, with that ace, queen, queen, ten. Really well done by Van Fleet. He won a lot of chips with Ace Queen. A lot of people might bet a little bit bigger on the flop, get the Queen 10 to fold. Maybe they fold. Wow. Turn. Makes, oh, a, but like, makes a play. Bluff me not. You see that? Bluff me not. Yeah. Like, you know what? Uh, no, nah, I'm not going down. Jack 8 gets the race through, takes it down. And he's now opening up aggressively with the 4 3 offset. Does flop a pair of threes, but Ape Styles makes mid pair with his Queen 5 offset. Yeah, I mean, Ape Stats got me feeling really good. He's like, man, I've been yeah. to this final table three times. Haven't done that well yet, but this one, he's got the chip lead. He's up against a guy who's not a seasoned pro. He's got a really good chance, but bluff me not, he's, he's, he's wild. He's crazy. Like, the thing is, like, he, he can really just win this tournament randomly. That's that's the vibe I get from him, right? Like, he's just going to ship it in pre-flop or make some big play, big call down. Who knows? Ape Styles leading out here with his pair of queens and he gets oh. the call. Oh my goodness. I mean, this is actually starting to add up real quick. That is another decent sized spot heading to Ape Styles' way. Wow, I'm surprised by that call there because, I mean, what do bluff you mean? Bluff me not. Right bluff me. You can't get bluffed if you call with call down, technically, right? <laughs> you just can't get bluffed. That's the way. And you see Van Fleet, he's actually taking a different approach. Do you notice he's starting to limp his button? This is whenever you see a someone limp this deep, it's usually kind of saying, "Look, I got a post flop edge. I want to yeah. make the stack to pot ratio as large as possible because I, you know, multiple bets in can go in post flop, and I play those hands better than you, you know, by making that statement." Yeah, and also bluff me not is definitely getting a little out of line pre flop. Now this is the wrong moment, perhaps, for Jonathan to make a move because the ace four suited heads up feels like an absolute monster. I don't think me not to, me not. I, he's not folding. He just, he's just thinking, should I ship it? But look at oh. that flop. That is nice. Yep, Ape Styles kind of flopping the world here. Even though he doesn't really have anything yet and he's still behind. He's got the flush draw. He's got the gut shot. Oh, checks. He's going for the check raise all in. That's very yeah. sneaky. 
And I think that's that's a pretty good cool play because I think he can get a lot of hands better hands to fold. You just check right there. like you know a hand that feels obligated to bet the flop like eight nine. Oh. oh no, he's let his opponent hit the only card that will let him put in a lot of chips. Yep. Well, what is Ape Styles going to do on this turn? I have the feeling that he is going to put in some chips. You gotta fire now with the six nine suited because his opponent has a lot of hands on a fold. And when you three bet and you check this flop, what do you look like you got? Ace King and Ace Queen. Bluff me not. But a big decision here. He's got the ace four of spades, made top pair on the turn. I'd like to see him just go for it. There's so much in the middle right now, like 5.2 I think you should, million. You got to just call. Oh, oh no. no, you should go for it. Go for it, go for it. <laughs> Never mind. Oh, I was going to say, you got to just call because you want to let your opponent bluff that ace. You don't want to let him get away from bluffs. But anyways, Van Fleet makes the gin card somehow is going to win a ton of chips. Does he go for a smaller bet? He Does could win the tournament here. He no, no, this, he could. Yep. This could absolutely be it. I mean, this looks like a bluff because it feels that most of the draws have missed, but the 6 9 did not miss. And his ape style is going to take this high roller super millions down here with a straight on the river. If Bluff Me Not calls, it is all over. Can Bluff Me Not get away from this? Oh, man. Good nope. game. He, he calls. cannot. It's he makes over. the call, and it is all over indeed. Ape Styles is going to be the champ of the 11th edition of the High Roller Super Millions, the biggest one we had so far by far. 267 entries, but Ape Styles will walk away with $493,000. Just played an excellent final table tonight, Nano. I mean, how did that end already? Why did we go on break if it was just gonna be <laughs> three, four, five hands later? Uh, what the, what happened? That heads up was so fast. This is also one of those final tables, those heads up matches where we got to the heads up, we're like, Taking maybe an hour, it's okay, 30 minutes. It's like five minutes is over, it's just super quick. Uh, congrats to Bluff Me Not. Top two is pretty good for a guy who satellited in for a hundred dollars, normally plays mid stakes. He, sh he won a lot of money today. He That's an understatement, <laughs> Nano. You're like, pretty good. The guy who invested a hundred dollars and won four hundred thousand dollars. That's pretty good. Wow, you're hard to please, aren't you? Oh my goodness, mate. That is amazing, okay? That's a modern poker story dream. That is what everybody dreams of that plays these kind of satellites. You're always hoping to, I mean, at least make it to the next level. And then maybe you can satellite into the main event and you can play with the big guys. You can play with the love guys that you've seen on TV. And he didn't just play with them. He went all the way to the final table and then he went all the way to the heads up. I think it's an absolutely amazing performance. Uh, it's got a sting that you got so close and you were the chip leader heading into the heads up match. Uh, but I still think that this is not just pretty good. This is amazing. Yeah, he did really well. And he was he was aggressive, right? That guy, was, yeah. he, he was not scared. Compared to the, all the other satellite players, he was just like relentless. Really just went for it. His big swing to get him to that top two spot was when he three bet the aces against Ruin F. Ruin F just punted it with the two sevens. Uh, but you know, to be fair to Bluff Me Not, he had a bad image, right? He was three betting and King Six suited, uh, got shoved on, you know, he was just ripping it in with like King Pens and stuff. So, to be fair, he built the image to get the seven shoved on him. If someone else re raised, I don't think uh, Ruin F would have just shipped in those sevens as easily. Uh, so, hats off to him, of course. Let's talk about our champion, the man Ape Styles. I hyped him up the very first time I saw him, mm -hmm. and he didn't do that well. And then he came back to the second found table, and then, you know, he got fifth place. He got seventh and fifth, but today he got it done. Uh, he came in in sixth place, shipped the tournament. He played really well, but he plays a really creative style. He's willing to take it post-flop. He's willing to make a lot of bluffs. Every time we see his found table profile, he's got some crazy bluff, uh, you know, <laughs> on people post-flop. I told you about him before, but I want to tell you again, you know, he's been around a really long time. He was one of the best MTT players. He had some like problems, some life issues that happened that kind of made him, you know, had to step down a little bit, you know, just kind of regather himself. But he came back and said, I'm going to be one of the best tournament players. He's going to study hard. He plays all the time. He played the highest game. He's been playing 25Ks and playing 100K tournaments. He's been playing these 10K tournaments, you know, three final tables. He's a really nice guy. He has a good heart. He's back. He says, I'm going to be one of the best. And he's not afraid. And the thing is, he puts himself out there. He's just like, 
you know, he writes blogs, talks about his story. So if you want to read more about him, just Google him. But also, he's, he thinks he's one of the best, and he is one of the best. I remember, I actually remember, I don't know if you know this, but uh, I think Ben CB was streaming or something. He, he, he didn't think Jonathan Van Fleet was maybe was as good or something, or he had some kind of tag note on him. And Van Fleet was a little bit offended. He's like, look, I, I heard you don't think I'm that good or something. And he basically said, you want to challenge uh, who get most cash is and challenge of 100K minimum or something. And Ben CB was like, nah, I'm good. I'm no, no good. And then, <laughs> that's the thing. Van Fleet's like a new man. And I'm so happy for him. I'm glad he shipped this tournament. I told you when he first found the table, this guy's really good. He didn't show it yet. I think today he did. Oh, absolutely. I think especially early on when he didn't really have a lot of wiggle room because he didn't have that many chips to work with. I think he just picked his spots incredibly well. He stayed out of trouble when it could have been trouble. And then eventually when he saw his opportunities, he capitalized on them. And I felt like once he started rolling, he never stopped here. And at one point it did really feel after Rune F lost almost all of his chips with the sevens against the aces, it, it like I just looked at Ape Styles and was like, okay, he's probably winning this tonight. And uh, he did, and he did it in a very convincing manner. It was a really cool final table, very different than we had in some of the previous weeks, of course, because we had a lot of new players and people that have never really been in spots like this before playing for this much money. Uh, but in the end, the veteran did take it down, and I think that was really cool. It was the biggest edition we had so far, Nano. 267 entries. That already makes me excited for the next one. Of course, this tournament always takes place on a Sunday, guys, and the satellites are leading up to Sunday. Sunday evening, at least for the Europeans, it starts off and they play all the way down to the final table. And then the final table is possible until Tuesday. Well, I think that's kind of it. You know, now I wanted to uh, tell you something before, uh, you know, we didn't have time because there were too many hands. But once upon a time, I played a little tournament in uh, the casino here in Rotterdam. It was like a 40-man tournament. And we have our own regulars, right, in that casino scene. And those are like the good guys. And, you know, I knew how to play back then, but I obviously wasn't that good. But I ran really well. And I got heads up against one of the guys that's just a pure veteran in that casino. And he tried to kind of intimidate. He's like, so uh, you got any experience, heads up and stuff? And like, I could see that what he was trying to do. He was trying to make me nervous. And I literally, like, I had a 4 to 1 chip lead. I just shoved almost every hand, every ace, every king. Because I was like, okay, I know this guy's better than me. And I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to play this game. And I could see that he got pretty frustrated. He's like, and after like five shoves, he's like, nice poker you're playing, mate. And I was like, yeah, well, <laughs> uh, I know I picked my battles well, you know. Like, I know he's better than me. I'm not even going to get in that kind of trouble. Like I've got the chip lead. I'm trying to end it. And then eventually he just kind of had enough of it and he called me down with like Queen 10 when I I shipped like Ace 3 and it held. And I was like, yeah, I was like, I think I did this perfectly. Why put myself in trouble? Like, I'm not going to try to outplay this guy that's better than me. I'm just trying to end it. And I, I think like, you know, if you know your strengths, you know your weaknesses. I don't think that's the worst approach. I agree with you. But there's only one thing problem with your story. It should have ended with he called me a 6-4 offsuit and busted. <laughs> no, he did not call. Uh, he called with Queen. I was ahead though when he, he did finally call. Anyway, guys, that is going to be it for us today. We hope you guys really enjoyed uh, this edition of the High Roller Super Millions. Definitely some beautiful poker stories evolving in front of our eyes. Turns out that $100 can be worth almost $400,000 in GG Poker. That's it. Now, now, do you have any final words before I close it out? Uh, I'm going to open up the GG Poker Lobby and click the VIP games and just rail the hell out of those games. So you guys should <laughs> Are they going again? I didn't check yet, but I'm about to real soon. All right. Well, there's a good chance that you guys will see Christopher Brewer and Limitless going crazy again at those tables. That's it for us. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to follow the channel if you haven't done that yet. We'll be back next week, same time, same place. And of course, if you are playing over at GG Poker and you are in the hunt for those bracelets, I wish you all the luck and hopefully one of you guys will take one of those big events down. Thank you for watching and see you next week.